bodies recently found in a mass grave did not match the students. On Monday, hundreds of protesters, including teachers, gathered in the capital of Guerrero and clashed with riot police, broke windows, and set flames to a government building. The protesters are calling for an investigation into police corruption and accusing the officers of being connected to the same cartel believed to have taken the students. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Jessica Armand would like to thank Liberty Beat listeners for all their support. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at LibertyBeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty News and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at TheLibertyBeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheLibertyBeat. Around 7 million passwords from the file hosting service Dropbox have been hacked through a third-party service. Someone posted 400 of the passwords on Pastebin and promised to post more for Bitcoin. The hackers' claims of possessing nearly 7 million passwords have been denied by Dropbox. Heated battles over water fluoridation continue around the world. In Dublin, Ireland, city council members passed a motion that will stop fluoridating Ireland's water supply. Ireland is one of the few remaining nations with a mandatory water fluoridation policy. Israel's health minister faces backlash over a unilateral decision to stop fluoridating the nation's water. A group of dentists and health professionals are appealing the decision to the High Court of Justice, saying that the decision will cause harm to public health. In Texas, Houston and Dallas activists continue to campaign for fluoride-free water. The group Activists for Truth is bringing Dr. Paul Conant of the Fluoride Action Network to a hearing on water fluoridation on October 19th and 20th. Fluoride Free Houston, meanwhile, continued their visits to city council for the third week in a row. The group has so far garnered support from two city council members and attracted the attention of Houston's health community. Cleared of the murder that had put him behind bars for almost 30 years, David McCallum sobbed and thought of the man who wasn't there with him. Co-defendant Willie Stuckey's conviction had also just been thrown out after Brooklyn District Attorney Kenneth Thompson concluded the two confessed falsely as teenagers to kidnapping and killing a stranger and taking a joyride in his car. But Stuckey wasn't in court Wednesday to be freed. He died in prison in 2001. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. After visiting his girlfriend of two years at her workplace to deliver an unexpected threat for Valentine's Day, violent and controlling boyfriend Matthew Strachan spoke to The Onion about remaining a devoted and committed abuser. On a special day like today, I like doing something extra malicious for Mallory, you know, just so she knows that I've been thinking about hurting her. I mean, you should have seen the look on her face when I came and surprised her at work today. It was so great. I mean, she had no idea I was going to come to her office to belittle and frighten her. I mean, I wanted to do it in front of her friends to really humiliate her. Strachan added that while he doesn't always get a chance to inflict harm on Mallory, he tries his best each and every day to create an environment of sustained physical and emotional abuse to leave her feeling completely alienated and powerless. Just wait till she sees what I have in store for her tonight. I love Valentine's Day. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. I'm a huge fan of the Onion. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features you'll find there. The us in the studio tonight includes me, Ian. And Lauren Rumpler, Objectivist Girl. And Mark. All right, don't forget you can join us uh, on our website by creating content. What you see on the front page of freetalklive.com was put there by listeners just like you. You can submit content to it. It's a Reddit-based system. You can vote things that you like up, and you may vote things down that you don't like. So go and check it out. Get interactive 
at freetalklive.com. Uh, it's good to be with you tonight and not sitting in a cage. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, gosh. So, it could have right? gone either way today. It, it could have. You never know, right? Like, people ask me, oh, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I or Today. Uh, I don't know. I have no clue. So to bring you up to speed, I was facing some uh, two years in prison for uh, some ridiculous charges that I was arrested for back in April of this year. There's a more detailed story over at freekeen.com that I posted up along with the actual full sentencing video from today. But I was charged with two misdemeanors. One of them was called unsworn falsification, which is not quite perjury. Perjury is a felony. Unsworn falsification is a misdemeanor. And then uh, also the other charge was prohibitions, which seems like a really strange charge. Sounds like you've got alcohol or something like that. But no, it actually is just what was prohibited in this case is using a false or fictitious name when one applies for a driver's license here in New Hampshire. And so I had changed my name legally to Ian Freeman, finally, after many years of using both my given name and and the name Ian Freeman uh, over over years. And so I finally went through the legal probate court process of doing this. And that's really what got me in all the trouble. Right. And basically, Uh, the the, the judge in front of uh, whom you were standing and many of the bureaucrats are sort of, they're the ones that wanted you to change your name legally. The judge certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so well, even though like over those years I had registered to vote under the name Ian Freeman, so I kind of had this idea that, oh, well, it was no big deal to use two different names because I had been using two different names for a long time. And there's a court decision in New Hampshire called Moskowitz versus Moskowitz, which says you can use more than one name so long as you like you could call yourself object- objectivist girl so long as you <laughs> don't use it for fraudulent or criminal purposes. And so I didn't consider myself committing fraud when I went into the DMV to get a license and gave them my given name. Now, the reason I did that after, two days after I changed it legally was because I went in and I tried to give them the name Ian Freeman, to which I just changed it legally. I, I, you know, I had the legal name change paperwork and everything. But they told me I needed some sort of social security paperwork, and Hmm. I don't want anything to do with the people in social security, so I really would have preferred not to get that social security paperwork, and ultimately I didn't. And the the way I didn't get that was I went back the next day, gave them my old driver's license from Florida with my given name on it. And then, uh, you know, I didn't have to give them the social security paperwork since I used my given name, since that's what the social security number was, you know, still under. Associated with, yeah. Yeah. And so then later, under the threat of arrest by the police, I went ahead and changed the name. I was going to do it anyway. I just hadn't gotten around to it. Changed my name on the New Hampshire license to Ian Freeman. And that was a way for me to avoid having to deal with social security. So I was able to successfully get a New Hampshire driver's license with the name Ian Freeman, without having to go to the Social Security office. I got my New Hampshire's driver's license today. Congratulations. I just went and got it. Hopefully like they won't be uh, really threatening happy. you with jail time over it like they did. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully not. I would really like that. But, you know, at the mention of going at renaming myself legally Objectivist Girl, I don't think I could go Objectivist Girl full-time. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing, right? Like, so uh, for years I didn't I didn't rename myself legally, and I finally did it just because I, would, I wanted to be called that in court and sometimes i had been called that in court but in other courts not so much That's so funny. you know the results were were kind of mixed and so they arrested me f- for that and they charged me with these class a misdemeanors which means that in new hampshire a class a can be sentenced to up to a year in jail uh, there's also i think up to a thousand dollar fine for a class a and that too was obviously fairly inconvenient i wasn't expecting that to happen as i explained in court today this wasn't an act of civil disobedience i didn't even know that i was breaking uh, the law and in fact the women that worked at the dmv who knew i had been it's the same women that were there one day to the next they didn't they, know you're breaking the law either no they what? knew i was, was there one day to the next using two different names and they didn't say hey that might be illegal no they just happily took my documents and gave you me know, the license most people don't know when they're breaking the law i mean sure. it's like you break like three felonies uh, right in the morning i yeah. mean you know it, it's just the amount of laws in this country are ridiculous um and it's impossible to know them all make. well since you bring that up at the very end of my trial for this where i was found guilty ultimately 
the police officer from the state police, the detective who is investigating and arresting me in this case, he comes up to me and makes some sort of comment. And you can kind of hear it on the video, but not really. Uh, he makes some sort of comment about how, oh, well, I should, I should read more of the laws or whatever. And I asked him if he's read all of the laws. And he admitted, of course, that he hadn't, <laughs> you know, even though he, d he has read more than the average person because he's a cop. It's and that's job. their job. Uh, but, you know, I kind of got him to admit that even he hasn't read all the laws. So how that's can just anyone the ones in New Hampshire. Right. How can anyone be expected to uh, to know what the laws are? It's ridiculous. Agreed. Um, that and I, it really baffles me why they care so much about what your name is and what you use as your name. Because, I mean, they've already got numbers assigned to us. Um, they don't really care about our names or oh, our individual identity. But yet, I, I don't I don't get this. Why is this such a concern? Well, it's because, no, the, this is speculation. It's the way for the state to make money off you well, changing your name, right? Well, the, the, that was done and over with. It's not that they're making money off of the criminal charges. They're not making money off the criminal charges because I won't pay money to the, the courts. I mean, I won't give money in, in fines to the court. So I had paid for the name change and that was done. That was that was easy. Like if, mm -hmm. if it were anyone else going through this process, it should be a relatively easy, smooth process. You pay them a hundred something bucks here in New Hampshire. They schedule a, a you, you know, fill out a very simple form. They schedule a court hearing for you. And the court hearing was the fastest court hearing I'd ever been in. I've been in a lot of court hearings. And this one, <laughs> I was literally, the, the judge walks in. I go up to my camera to flip open the little, whatever you call it, viewfinder on the side and boot it up and, you know, hit start. And literally by the time I'd finished that process, the hearing was over. This guy came in, sat down. I don't even know if he sat down. I think he did. He sat down and he asked me if, you know, I was going to use this for any fraudulent purposes or whatever. This name changed. And I was like, nope. And he's like, okay, here you go. <laughs> that was it. I mean, literally, there was <laughs> nothing to show from that court hearing because I didn't even get to record it all on that particular day. So it's a fairly fast thing. Like, it, you know, at least here in New Hampshire, it, I was I was blown away by, like, they scheduled it within two weeks. The hearing itself took 30 seconds. And boom, there you go. Name change. But for me... It became an issue. Well, I, I speculate because I'm an activist, right? They I, sent out a press release when I got arrested. Yeah. The state police was like, ah, this minister of the Shire Free Church, Ian Freeman with freekeen.com, he's been arrested. And I don't think, do they do that with every arrest they make? I highly doubt it. I think you're absolutely right that you were targeted um, for. Uh, because of your activist status. But there's a counter argument to that, Mark. And the counter argument is that I was only targeted after I had fooled around with the ID system too much. Well, had I but just you're gone... an activist with the, for the ID system, too. One of the yeah. reasons you chose you chose to, to go by the law. The state of New Hampshire has a law that says you can change your name without going through the legal name court, change. Court decision. What, whatever it is, the Moskowitz decision. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you know, court decision that says that you can change your name without a legal name change process, and you were attempting to do that and you showed over the course of five years that mm -hmm. the you know, frankly the government of new hampshire doesn't care about its precedent um really no, it don't. doesn't no. i mean mostly they left you alone but they really wanted you to go through their process That's and right. they treated you as though your name was not changed and you also were working under the assumption that the laws that they have regarding residency and, um, were, you know, legal. Like you, th that was the way they were going to act. That you had to claim to be a resident of New Hampshire to be a resident of New Hampshire as its law state. But that those two things really came into conflict. The reality of the law versus what is written. Um, it's just not the same thing. Well, the reality, of course, about law is they do whatever they want or near to it. And we can continue here in moments with uh, the sentencing for me and, like, thankfully, I'm how I pulled your fat out of the fire in a jail cell. Yes, Mark, you get all the credit. Uh, we'll exactly come back with, right. uh, <laughs> with more here in moments. <laughs> 855, 450 free. And I learned a few things today from my experience, which, uh, you know, I've constantly been learning about court. And by the way, I did not have an attorney for this, which means I didn't have to pay thousands of dollars to anybody for this. Free talk live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. 
Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have there for you. Uh, They are completely free, unlike those other talk show hosts who want to charge you for their sites. Again, enjoy over at freetalklive.com. You know, Free Talk Live is brought to you by Midas Resources. We love alternative currencies here on Free Talk Live and some classic alternatives that are still good today, gold and silver. These are great hedges against inflation, and they're pretty. You can go to gold.freetalklive.com and hook up with either one or both, 
And of course, the price is right, especially on silver right now, below 20 bucks uh, per ounce. Last time I looked, like close to $17 yesterday, I think it was, uh, for silver, which is an incredible price. So great time to go and uh, hook up over at gold.freetalklive.com. Maybe you'd prefer to talk to someone on the phone rather than use uh, some uh, internet site. Go to 877-857-9938. Dial that up. It's toll free for Midas Resources. That's 877-857-9938. Gold.freetalklive.com. Com. That uh, telephone number is at gold.freetalklive.com, It's too. on the site. Okay, yes. good to know. So, yeah, uh, toll-free number again here for us, if you want to call into the show tonight and bring up whatever's on your mind, is 855-450-FREE. We're talking a little bit about what happened today uh, in court for me. I was being sentenced on some charges that have been hanging over my head for about six months. I was arrested back in April on some misdemeanor charges having to do with identification so-called crimes. Now, let's be clear. No one was defrauded in this process at any point. No one complained about being defrauded. No right. one was defrauded. I've no one always, was ripped off. Right. I've always honored my obligations financially, whether it was under my given name or the name I've chosen for myself. Uh you know, everybody gets paid if, if I've told them I'm going to pay somebody, right? This is a paperwork snafu. Yeah. And so this was about the government showing who's boss, uh, the state police. They kind of made it clear, didn't they? I mean, made it clear who's boss. Well, like, this is. It's always clear this who's boss. This is a domination huh? thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, they made it clear that that's what it was about. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course that was <laughs> what it was about. Uh, no, this is an opportunity. I'm saying that they made it clear that that was the, what this was about. What makes you say that? Well, the maybe you should have read the laws thing, um, you know, that the the prosecutor came by with uh, afterwards. That was a police officer. Was, yeah. He wasn't the, the one doing the prosecuting? No, no. State okay. police. The police will have actual prosecutors prosecute free staters and liberty activists up here because, you know, we will defend ourselves, unlike the average person who will take a plea deal. Okay. So um, anyway, yeah, so they – and it was interesting, the the ruling that came out today. By the way, Mark came out and spoke as sort of a character witness, which I knew that you could have, but I always thought it was something that you did during felony trials. I guess for whatever reason, I never really thought about, hey, you could bring up a character witness on a misdemeanor or something Well, I don't like think that. you can pull this off very often. Now, no? um, I think – no, I don't. I think that the judge in this circumstance uh, says, you know, like I, I brought up that, look uh, – you know, Ian's changed his ways over time. Would you not agree? You know, I wasn't having, I wasn't badgering him with questions uh -huh. or anything like that. But I, you know, was asking sort of rhetoric, making statements that would act, uh, make someone ask questions. Is he's changed his attitude over time, and that, um, you know, like the your little system is working. This wasn't something he expected to have happen. So. But this wait, are you saying you don't think that uh, normally character witnesses are allowed? No, I think character witnesses are allowed. But that's what I was saying I learned today is that, uh, that apparently you can have character witnesses uh, at a sentencing hearing for a misdemeanor but charge. But you go to court about, about nine times a year, and uh, I don't know how many sentencing hearings you that's get out of these like things. It's probably like nine times every three months. If you're talking about other people's trials, I'm in there constantly. And I'm talking about your own. But And so what I'm no, saying is, is that, that – the rarity of me going in mm -hmm. and making a character i can't give you a character witness every quarter no i see what you're saying that yeah. that be of any value to the judge yeah. i think that in this circumstance the judge you know listened to what i had to say and took it under advisement because he essentially did what i asked i mean and i think that you know your your conduct up to this point had mattered in that case because this was essentially the, a regular trial. This wasn't something you were trying to do. This is the way people get caught up in the system on a pretty regular basis, sure. and I think the judge kind of saw that rather than trying to get you with some big sentence. He well, was, he knew. I think you were was... targeted by the police. Sure. I think he had to find you guilty because you were guilty in his estimation yeah. by the, the the you know the crimes. But I felt like the judge really tried to be fair in this circumstance. I, that's what I said in my article over at freekeen.com was that uh, Judge Burke, who in a lot of cases has made some undesirable decisions, uh, in this case I think he made the right decision for Judge Burke. Uh, and it turned out to be a decent, you know, an acceptable decision for me because I was prepared to appeal this case in New Hampshire if you have a Class A misdemeanor, as it's called, then uh, it's because you're facing jail time, you can have a jury trial. 
Now, I'd like to see it to where everybody, no matter what misdemeanor, no matter if there's jail time or not, I think everyone facing misdemeanor charges, even violations, should be able to have a jury trial. But that's another issue. That's what I'd like to see happen. That's not what's happening. So uh, with a Class A misdemeanor, you're facing jail time. You can go to what's called a de novo trial, and that's Mm -hmm. Latin for uh, from the beginning. From the beginning, meaning that the whole trial process begins anew. All of it. You know, discovery, everything starts uh, fresh. You've got a jury instead of a bench trial. And so it's interesting in New Hampshire because you can uh, essentially have like a test trial first if it's a Class A misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. You can go to trial with the judge and the state has to put on their whole case and call all their witnesses and, you know, ask all their questions. And you can cross-examine them and all that and, you know, get a get a, a feel for what their case is, basically. And then start again with, uh, with the jury, which I could have done. And I did do that back in 2011, if you may recall, when I was facing... Uh, when I, I faced down some charges uh, for standing in front of a police car. And committed. so you're found, found guilty twice on that one. Wait, what? You were found guilty twice on that because you're, the judge found you guilty and then the jurors found you guilty. Not quite. Okay. Uh, partially true. The judge found me guilty on the two charges I was facing, ah, yes. resisting arrest and obstructing government administration. When I went to the jury trial, I was only found guilty on one of the two charges. So I actually beat... Uh, half of the charges in front of the jury. Thing is, the judge at Superior Court at the jury trial sentenced me 50% harsher than the judge at the bench trial did. True. So, turns out, even though I beat one of the charges at the jury trial, it didn't help me. <laughs> I got a worse sentence after the jury trial. So, again, another nice change to see to the system would be that whatever the sentence is at the bench trial should be the maximum sentence at the jury trial. But that's not the way it is. So there's a disincentive to go to a jury if you get um, if you don't get jail time, right? So in in this case today, I was given community service time, not jail time. I was given a suspended jail sentence. So there's a year hanging over my head in jail if I get another misdemeanor charge or felony charge. They like to have you that way. Yeah. So that's hanging (laughs) over my head. That year in jail is hanging over my head for two years. But there's no actual serve time in jail sentence against me at the moment and so that disincentivizes me from going to a jury because i know that if i go to the jury while i have a chance of you know what if i you know i could hire a lawyer come at it from a completely different uh, aspect and you know maybe the jury would find me not guilty pretty unlikely though given our history with juries here in new hampshire so far juries haven't really been so great at doing that so if i get found guilty in front of a jury then i could end up with jail time as a result of that. so I bet I would be willing to bet on it. So that's why I say it was a smart sentence for Judge Burke today because he sentenced me hard enough to put the axe over my head and, you know, show that the state's in charge. And keep you quiet for two years. Right. That's right. That's the axe over my head. And then at the same time, he didn't sentence me draconian to the point where I'm having to go to jail. So I'm not appealing the sentence, not appealing the case. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Our very own Tracy met farmer Ray Kimball, who says that his horse, Franklin, has the ability to speak full sentences. When did you first realize he could talk? Well, I'd hear him saying things when I was sleeping, and then I'd go out to the barn and we'd have some real conversations. Can we talk to Franklin? Uh, He can't wait to meet you. (laughs) Say hi, Franklin. What's that? That's a good one. What, what did he say? <laughs> he said, who's the pretty lady? <laughs> Aw. Franklin, do you like living on the farm? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Did he well, 
Say something? Tracy, you live here now. I spent a cozy night at Ray's farmhouse in a room he called the altar. I learned that the farmer has a whole lot more on his mind than just a talking horse. You are my beloved. This is the Onion News Network. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. Bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. All of the features, we give them to you. So enjoy freetalklive.com. Oh, we got a webcam, too, by the way. Go to cam.freetalklive.com. You'll see Lauren's smiling face right there, right now. So, uh, again, that's cam.freetalklive.com. Mark, where is a good place to go? To get bitcoins. Expresscoin.com. They're the best choice for getting bitcoins. Or if you want to get other cryptocurrencies like Litecoin, Dogecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, they make it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. So you can get your cryptocurrencies with a check, money order, or wire transfer. Or, and I think this is the best option, honestly, you make a deposit at a local credit union that has shared branching, and you can get your bitcoins or cryptocurrencies all within a business day it's fast safe and easy like i said before to start off at expresscoin.com whether you're in the u.s or canada you can do it from your smartphone by downloading the app expresscoin.com use coupon code ftl that's ftl is in free talk live for up to 40 dollars worth of your cryptocurrency with no fee at all expresscoin.com coupon code FTL. Coming up, we'll give you a rundown on what happened with the Robin Hood case. It's been a busy week for court here in the Keene, New Hampshire area, as of course, longtime listeners of the show know that the hosts of this program are typically here in New Hampshire because of the Free State Project, which is an idea of gathering liberty-loving people together into the same geographic area so we can actually have an effect, so we can be together and have you know social fun and also do all kinds of effects Active activism that makes a difference, and I was you know, so grateful that people came out this morning, bright and early, 8:30. Mark, you even wore a suit uh, to uh, to support 
me in court, which is really appreciated. And it's it's not uncommon for that to happen here in New Hampshire. If you're going to court and you put it out there, hey, I've got court on this date at this location, and you let the activist community know that, people are going to come out at 8 in the morning or whatever to give you some backup. And, and there's a lot of people that were in court today that really, you know, the, the lucky ones had their family, uh, a family member with them. Mm, yeah, a lot of people go to court alone. Most people do. There was a guy that actually had a seizure in court today. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, he was all by himself, and that mm. was. It's always scary uh, when that happens. So uh, that's where I was today. Sentencing happened. The video of it is up right now. I'll put it a, a link to it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter here in a moment. Uh, but you can go to freekeen.com and see that. Uh, so just to recap, uh, two years in prison is what I was facing. The judge did not go in any jail direction. I am There is a year of jail hanging over my head uh, on both of the misdemeanor counts, and that year is hanging over my head for two years. So, you know, they've, they've got me under the axe, so to speak, which is where they like to have me because it, you know, keeps me under more control. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you know, it could have been a lot worse, and it wasn't. And so he kind of balanced things, I thought, in a way that worked for him, that it, it was the right decision for him to make. Because he, you know, he appeased the state in that it was still, they still have control over me in the, with with the uh, suspended sentence. But the state's attorney asked for 60 days he in jail. He did ask for 60 days in jail. But, uh, and, and at the same time, he made himself look not like a total tyrant, and so he kind of rode the fence, I think, very well, effectively, I'd say. and he did a good job with it, uh, all things considered. So there's that. Uh, that happened today. I am going. Uh, what the sentence I have is a uh, it, not a fine, by the way. This is also something worth pointing out. So this the state's attorney asked for a five hundred dollar fine, and I think it may have been five hundred dollar fine per charge, but I wasn't real. I don't remember exactly what he said. So it was at least five hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars. And no fine was issued to me as part of the sentence, which is fairly uncommon. Normally, when you're getting sentenced, whether it's jail time or not, there's usually a fine that, that goes along with it. In this case, I was sentenced to community service. Now, in New Hampshire, the way it works here is if you get sentenced to a fine, most of the time you can do community service for that. But a lot of the times, if let's say, Lauren, you go to court and you, you were telling us you don't have a lot of court courtroom experience yet. No, I am. I have been a good kid so I, I my whole life as I've good as you way. are eventually you're going to get some sort of ticket you'll have the well, opportunity don't, don't put that on to me take, <laughs> they're going to get you i know that uh, rob matthias has been pulled oh. over six times in like the last six months or something like well, that I've been, i mean i've been pulled over you should take that to court uh well no they just gave me a warning oh you lucked out okay. yeah they it does gave help me a warning a it, well the thing was is that my my plate lights were out. Gotcha. And so I fixed them and they haven't pulled me over. But they also were like, hey, you need to change your residency, which is fine because I am a New Hampshire resident now. So if you were to go to court on one of those, t if you got a ticket and if you were to take it to court, you probably get found guilty because, you know, if you get a speeding ticket or parking ticket or whatever, they're, they're going to find you guilty almost always unless the cop doesn't show up. Doesn't matter what questions you ask or what your tactics are. Um, so you get found guilty. And then they'll say something like, "Oh, well, that'll be a uh, you know four hundred dollar fine." Or let's say you get caught with uh, with alcohol, an open container, or whatever. That's a five hundred dollar fine, or something arbitrary like that. They hit you with this fine, and then you could say something like, "Sometimes well, there's a fee for the fine too." There's usually a fee for the fine. It's I think ridiculous. it's twenty four percent. So then you could say something to the judge like, "Oh well, I would prefer to do community service," and that's not good enough usually to say that you would rather do community service. Because the judge will usually say something like, oh, well, you'll need to fill out this financial affidavit. Because if you can't afford to pay the fines, then they'll let you do community service. But I've never filled out a financial affidavit for community service. Now, why is that? Because you refuse to do the fine. I refuse to pay the fine based on principle. And I let the judges know that when I'm being sentenced, whatever the sentence is, you know, whether it's a speeding ticket or whatever, I let them know I have a moral objection to paying fines into this court system. I don't have a problem with community service or actually paying the fine to a community group. So, you know, if I get hit with a speeding ticket or something like that, one, one time in Concord, I got a $10 parking ticket. I motioned the court to accept an alternative payment in that case to where I could give 50 bucks to the local food bank. And but, the judge was like, okay, sure. Okay, wait. Stupid question. Yeah. You ready? Okay, so can you choose your community service? Yes. Oh, well then that's the route you should go. 
it's absolutely the route I should go. And of course, the, the other thing is, you I'm have get, to be willing. If I'm going to get like credit and get off for just doing stuff that I would probably already do anyway, do, yeah. like share sharing. Like, exactly. There you go. Just do work for share sharing. That's one option. That's awesome. Uh, and so, so, but the thing you have to be willing to do is you have to be willing to really stand on your principles. You can't be wishy-washy about it. You can't just say, oh, I'd prefer community service, because then the judge will demand financial affidavits, and you know you have to prove that you don't have a job, and there's all kinds of requirements. But if you're firm about it and you say, I refuse to pay the fine, under no circumstances am I going to pay this fine, and I'm willing to go to jail if necessary, then if you're willing to take that position, usually the judge in front of a courtroom full of people will not want to send you to jail because it looks bad. They'll uh, they'll go ahead and agree to community service. And so today what happened was I was sentenced to community service. This judge knows me well enough to where he knows I'm not going to pay the fine. And this is actually another smart move on his part because there were people still in that courtroom who were not free staters, who were not liberty activists. And there's certain things that courts don't want to do in front of the average person, which is one of the reasons why I had to wait through almost every other case throughout the day. It was likely a deliberate choice. Because they were choice. hoping that nobody would be there. But yeah, I right. mean, on top of telling them that there's absolutely no way that you would pay for this, but you should also state that he has a choice here. He can either have you benefit the community or have mm-hmm. the community pay for you to be in a cage. You can make a statement like that, yeah. absolutely, and I've made statements like and that at makes, sentencing. Yeah, and then in the past. you release that video, and it's like he can't possibly but send you he to cut, jail. He can't prevented happen. me from making any sort of statement like that by just assigning community service as part of the sentence. Had he said he you did need stipulate to, that your community service can't be for the Shire Free Church, that's reasonable. I think it's reasonable yeah, too. No I think a minister, if a minister for, for any other church uh, got community service, it would be unlikely that that minister could do right. service, uh, you know, community service through their church. So by assigning community service rather than giving me a fine, had he given me a fine, I would have said something like, well, I refuse to pay fines to the state. But because he didn't give me a fine, I didn't have any reason to say that. And so the audience did not get to hear me say something like that, to take that kind of a stand. So he prevented me from doing that. It was very smart. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here. You can take control of the airwaves. More about whatever's on your mind. You may dial in here toll-free. It's Free Talk Live. It's all coming up. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. 
you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features on the site. They are completely free. So once again, that is freetalklive.com. And if you enjoy what we're doing here at Free Talk Live, you can support the show by buying stuff on Amazon. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. There's Amazon UK, Canada, and US. You click into the right Amazon for you and then just get whatever it is you're looking for. Free Talk Live will get a portion of the purchase price when you do that. So once again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. Going through some of the details on my sentencing today. Thank goodness it did not involve jail time, at least not immediately. There is a uh, jail sentence that's been suspended over my head for a period of two years, a one-year jail sentence. We can talk more about that, but first, let's go to Tom. He's in New Hampshire listening online to LRN.FM. Hello, Tom. Tom in New Hampshire, going once. Yes, uh, hello, I'm talking. You are here. Uh, Okay, a picture of these college freshmen who are sick and tired of getting shot down at the beer store because they're under 21, and they're sick and tired of getting chased away from the singles bars because they're under 21, So, by golly gee, they're going to spend spring break somewhere else. They're going to leave the United States bureaucrats' shape on the map, as you would say. And those lines on the map mean a lot to bureaucrats, as you might say. They do. And they're going to go down to Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico for spring break. And they check into the hotel, and they go hiking around. And where are we going to drink? Oh, here's a place, Restaurant Bar El Andariego. Let's go on in there. They belly on up. And they order up their cervezas and tequilas, and mm-hmm. there's nothing the United States bureaucrats can do to touch them for it because they're not in the United States, right? Well, I'll bet they've come up with something. Check this out. It's the oh, same no. kind of law. It's the same kind of law that forbids them to get on a plane in Mexico and spend the rest of their vacation in Cuba. It's trading embargoes. And there's not just countries that are on these lists. But these, uh, another list on the Treasury's website is called Specially Designated Nationals, and uh, it's mostly financial institutions that are blocked from sending them wire transfers. But the way the regulation is written, any U.S. person is forbidden to do business with any of these persons. And one of them is that bar that I happen to mention. So the irony is that... Uh, you know, here you have these people say, hey, we're outside the United States. There's nothing the U.S. can do to make a law against us going into this bar to drink beer. The way they get on these lists, by the way, you get uh, drug kingpins and you get people with terrorist connections. So just to be you clear, are you saying there's specific bars you can't go and drink at or any old bar? 
just that one happens to be the, uh, in Mexico, happened to be on the list. Okay. And it's probably and it's because your, it's been there a long time. What What about, um, I mean... Well, he said because it's drug drug dealers well, or whatever. Well, it, it could be that, well, too. Well, it's drug kingpins, drug kingpins and terrorist connections, and they own various businesses. Right. So if and the drug your, kingpin owns a bar, know. then you're not it's supposed to go job. drink there. And it's your job to know which countries you're not allowed to go to and which— uh, So have there been arrests, Tom? I mean, have there been college students who've come back, they posted Facebook photos at whatever bar that was, and then they've been arrested? I mean, has, have there been consequences? Not yet. Mostly it's uh, financial institutions that are blocking things, and big businesses I aren't see. selling things with them. But that's just— keep, keep So in you're mind. speculating that they will be targeting ago. college students over this? It, it's just a few years ago that— Canadians who were born in the United States didn't have to worry about reporting their bank accounts to the U.S. Treasury. They didn't even know about that regulation until nowadays. And we don't know when they're going to start cracking down on so-called U.S. persons. It's uh, the businesses with terrorist connections, businesses that are owned by drug kingpins, mm. and businesses where some wise guy says, hey, you people in uh, Korea, North Korea and Iran and Cuba, you need anything, uh, just order it from me and I'll order it from the United States. And the U.S. bureaucrats see that, and so they add that person to the list. So, yeah, you never know what uh, what law lines you're going to be crossing out there wherever you are on the globe. Thanks, Tom, for the call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, you don't know. And, of course, the IRS really wants to keep tabs on you all around the world. There's the, what's it, the FACTA regulations where uh, foreign banks have to report bank accounts that you have at their bank if you are an American? They pretty much solved that. The foreign banks have pretty much solved that problem what do you by, mean? well, basically they just don't take accounts from Americans anymore. Oh. Um, y- y- if you're a U.S. citizen, Yay. you can't get an account wow. in a foreign bank. Yay. And it's What not, if you're an Estonian not, e-citizen, though? What, an Estonian e-citizen? Have you heard about this? No. I need okay, to hear so about, about I'm surprised. I thought you told me about it. So uh, so there's an activist up here, Menno, who uh, has is really into, like, traveling around the world and avoiding the state and trying to seclude yourself from being contacted by them. Anyway, I guess he found this news story about Estonia. They're creating an e-citizen. Some, and, and I don't know if that means that you would be able to get a passport, but the rumor is they might do that at some point in the future, that you'd be able to apply for citizenship in Estonia from a distance. Now, it's not happening yet. It's supposedly in the, in the planning stages. Okay. But uh, that might be interesting. Like, if you could just... Give Estonia some money, and then they let you become a citizen, and then you can have your own Estonian bank account or whatever, I or get a very, passport. It'd be very interesting if a country went and just went with the cheap citizenship route rather than the expensive one. Now, consider the U.S. State Department really hates this stuff. Yeah. They they will crack down. They'll stop uh, you know the payments to you. You won't get uh, you know the free money that kind of thing that uh, you would otherwise get. Sometimes you'll lose trade status uh, as a country. Mm-hmm. But I'd be very interested. What would it be like if the average American could give three or four thousand dollars? I'm just trying to think of a high number for yeah. people uh, that would be high but reachable, um, because currently some I think St. Kitts has something where if you buy a four hundred thousand dollar piece Crazy. of property, uh, that you can your family can become citizens or something like that. It's, something reachable by the average person, on the other hand, would be a big right. deal. It would be interesting if um, what would happen if that that occurred. So you could become an Estonian e citizen and likely not have to give up your U.S. citizenship. Most of these countries aren't like, oh yes, you absolutely have to give up your U.S. citizenship immediately. The United States may not even know about it and. And then you can start filing taxes differently at some point or another. You'd obviously have to tell them that way. Or you can get your passport or whatever it is you want to do. The world's becoming much more mobile. There's far fewer people that need to be nailed down to a geographic area to do a job uh, compared to 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Yeah, I don't like the idea of citizenship at all because citizenship suggests that you owe a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection. And we know that governments around, the, at least in the United States, have no obligation to protect you. And yeah, so it's an implication of ownership. Which it really is. is. One, I mean, not that I want to go too deep into this right now, but it's one of the reasons that I'm polyamorous is because I just don't, I don't like the idea of ownership. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, and own, owning another person it bothers me. And like the idea of citizenship is just another one of those things. It's another word for surf. It really is. I, yeah. Um, Subject. But, but if you don't ever go to Estonia, 
then being a citizen there could be of benefit, right? Because they can't really they can't really do anything to you if you're not within their borders. So in in the same way that in the United States, if you you know keep your car registered, if you move to New Hampshire but you keep your car registered in the state in which you are coming from, then to some extent that gang is now finally giving you some protection. <laughs> you know, like they're a ga- they're a gang, a criminal gang, and there's 50 of them uh, in the United States, and uh, you can to some extent play them off of one another. And so to have Estonia doing this means that you know there might be a little bit more competition among among the states of the world. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. Maybe. I- I think it is. That one would be worth, good. Yeah, one worth keeping an eye on, I think. So uh, back to a little bit more here about what happened in court today uh, with me. I was sentenced to 100 hours of community service, 50 hours per misdemeanor charge, and uh, a year of jail suspended over my head for two years. And again, the community service was given to me because I refused to pay fines, and the judge knew that. So he just gave me the community service right out rather than going with the fine. And the other interesting thing here that happened is that all of this happened without the assistance of an attorney. Now, I'm not saying that to brag that I'm the, you know, a great pro se litigant or anything like that, but I've, I've done it enough to where I'm comfortable uh, doing it. And in the, si- the system that we have here, there's really no reason not to especially if you've got class A misdemeanors, um, because you can, in New Hampshire, you can appeal a class A misdemeanor to a jury trial. So had I wanted to appeal, if I'd gotten a bad sentence today, something I didn't want to deal with, mm-hmm. like, you know, 60, 60 days in jail, I could have appealed to a jury trial and then hired the lawyer. You know, then it's more serious. Bring the lawyer in at that point. But there's no reason to not just Go for it yourself and get the courtroom experience of taking something on your own to trial. Really, but only a class A misdemeanor, not a class B misdemeanor, and not a class. But with a class B, you're not facing jail time anyway, so you might as well do it yourself in that case too. I feel bad. Violations, you might as well do it there as well. Speeding ticket, parking ticket, take it yourself. I feel bad about saying this, but I would just, I'd be so nervous. Oh yeah, it's really nervous. Try and talk. It is nerve wracking. I was nervous sitting up there giving testimony for his sentencing. I wasn't even facing jail. Right. I mean, you know how like open I am about talking and like assertive I am, but the minute you put me in front of the state, I just. It's scary. Let's talk about the nerve factor here in a moment because I think that's interesting and it's something everybody, almost, I think almost everyone would experience in a courtroom environment. More coming up here, hour two's next, Free Talk Live. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 8989. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
from Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.33 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,239 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $386. Antiwar.com reports Pentagon spokesman Rear Admiral John Kirby offered new details yesterday on the U.S. airstrikes against the Islamic State around the Syrian Kurdish border town of Kobani, claiming the U.S. believes it killed hundreds of the Islamic State fighters in the region. The Pentagon has escalated the number of strikes in and around Kobani repeatedly over the past week, despite officials maintaining that the town itself is not a priority. Kirby not only claimed the hundreds killed over all in U.S. strikes in the area, but 39 killed in the past two days, though other officials appear to concede that the town is still expected to fall as the Islamic State keeps pouring more and more reinforcements into the area. Kobani is valuable to the Islamic State, both as another border crossing into neighboring Turkey and as the last holding of the Kurds west of the Islamic State territory. The rest of Syrian Kurdish territory is in the far northeast of Syria. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. TechCrunch reports HBO is finally getting its online streaming game on after chairman and CEO Richard Plepler revealed that the broadcaster will launch a standalone streaming service next year. Plepler told a Time Warner investor meeting, That is a large and growing opportunity that should no longer be left untapped. It is time to remove all barriers to those who want HBO. Plepler confirmed that a service will launch with HBO's current partners in the U.S. markets next year, although he did not provide details on how much it would cost and whether the company will use its own technology or work with existing players. HBO has watched Netflix rise from a young startup into a service that has more paying subscribers in the U.S., not to mention an overseas business that has been aggressively expanding in Europe. The Associated Press adds, Forrester analyst James McQuivy says HBO and ESPN are the two main reasons why people have cable and or satellite TV. The whole industry has eyed them for years, nervous that one day they would decide to do exactly what HBO says they'll do in 2015. We don't know until we see pricing and packaging how rapidly this will force a change in the way pay TV operators work, but it will definitely force a change. Up to 10 million U.S. households are currently broadband only, and about 45% of Americans stream television shows at least once a month. That number is expected to increase to 53%, or approximately 175 million people, by 2018. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Reuters reports Hong Kong police used pepper spray early on Thursday to stop pro-democracy protesters from blocking a major road near the office of the city's embattled leader amid public anger over the police beating of a protester a day earlier. At police headquarters in the nearby district of Wan Chai, hundreds of people gathered outside into the early hours of the morning to express outrage at the beating, with dozens queuing to lodge formal complaints over the incident. Authorities on Wednesday said police involved in the beating of a member of the pro-democracy Civic Party would be suspended. Footage of the beating has gone viral and injected fresh momentum into a protest movement that has been flagging after nearly three weeks of demonstration over Chinese restrictions on how Hong Kong will choose its next leader. At its peak, nearly 100,000 protesters had been on the streets. Those numbers have dwindled significantly, but a hardcore group of demonstrators, mostly students, has kept up the pressure of Hong Kong authorities who have called the protest illegal. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
I'd like to tell you about our newest innovations in helping to keep our communities safe. Problem Creation Policing. Problem Creation Policing, or PCP, is a way to get the entire community involved in maintaining a safe neighborhood. This is more than just a neighborhood watch. We plan to have officers on the ground helping, aiding, and surveilling for illicit activities. You never know when you're going to find some young punk doing something illegal out in public. That's why we're going to have officers everywhere. You never know when they're going to pop up. So we want PCP in our homes, at our jobs, and in our schools. We want PCP everywhere. How can you get involved in PCP? Well, for starters, you can call your local authorities and ask them how you can get PCP. I'm Byron Kingsley from the Citizens Respecting the Authority of Police. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here and bring up whatever's on your mind. Coming up, Mark will tell us that marriage rates are at an all-time... Well, he'll fill in the blank here in a little bit. Uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And we've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request. We'll approve it, and it'll be easy for you to reach out to us in that way in the future. Uh, the toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Tonight with you, it's Ian here. And Lauren Rumpler, objectivist girl. And Mark. Uh, so we were talking in the last hour about what happened in court today in Keene, New Hampshire. There was a chance, although I'll be at a small chance, uh, that I would not be here tonight due to jail as a sentence for me. The state's attorney uh, suggested 60 days in jail for you. The reason why I say there was a small chance is not that I thought there was a small chance I would get jail. I thought there was a good chance I would be sentenced to jail. But I didn't know how much jail, and if it was like just a week in jail, then I might have just gone in. But at the same time, I might have wanted to put it off until after Keenvention. I probably would have asked for that. Um, but there was a small chance I would have been in jail. Thankfully, I'm not. I'm able to continue doing this show, which I love to do, and running LRN.FM and you know taking care of my dog and my family and all that stuff. So I'm grateful to not be in a cage tonight. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go to freekeen.com. I actually just put a link up to kind of my summary of what happened today. It's the uh, the fresh story there right now at freekeen.com, and that link is also up on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. But I was talking about how I went to this trial. I you know went to the arraignment, went to the trial, put in all these motions, and uh, I went to sentencing, and I did all of it without an attorney. And what I was suggesting was that, you now look, I don't know what things are like where you are. I only know what the criminal justice system is like in New Hampshire. So, you know, your mileage may vary. The system where you live may be drastically different. I know that in Florida, uh, they actually charge you court costs when you go to court, and that can be pretty inconvenient, uh, especially if if you live in a state where, like, for instance, if you challenge a speeding ticket, some states will make you pay the speeding ticket in advance before they will let you take it to court. Right. I mean, what? the judicial system yes. looks nothing like justice these days. You might as well call it the legal system because it has little to do with justice. Now, I've heard rumor, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard rumor that in Manchester, which is, Lauren, where you live in New uh -huh. Hampshire, that if you get a parking ticket there, they do the same thing there, where you have to pay the parking ticket in advance before you can go to court. I oh. think that's a crappy system, personally, but for the wow. most part in New Hampshire... For the most part, if you get some sort of ticket, you can just take it to court, and then that's it. You know, Then if you get found guilty, you'll have to pay the ticket. If you are found not guilty, then you don't have to pay the ticket. And so there's really no reason to not do it here. There's no reason to not go to court. But, Lauren, you came up with one reason why to not go to court, and that is it's scary. It can be an intimidating, uh, nerve-wracking process. And actually, I was really pleased that it wasn't hard for me to go to sleep last night given that I, I had this sentencing here today, what I found hard to, to deal... The hardest time for me to go to sleep was actually the first night after I was found guilty. So when I went to court and then I was found guilty, I was, I was a little bit despondent after that. I'm like, oh, crap, you know, what's going to happen now kind of thing. And like different scenarios were flowing through my head. By the time uh, sentencing came up today, 
and last night or whatever, it's just like, you know, I'm resigned. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, and you know, I'm just going to have to prepare for the worst. And the worst, in my case, was, was two years. But if the worst, in your case, Lauren, is a parking ticket, then there's not much at risk, right? You, like, can, you can handle that level of risk. Unless you are worried about it's going... so much pressure. Right, which is why... So much stress. Which is why the first time you go to court should be for something like a parking ticket, something lightweight, something where even if you get found guilty, the, the punishment's not going to be anything of significance. So it allows you to go in and feel that pressure and experience that those sensations and deal with it uh, without without the worry that you're going to go to jail. Now, if you feel like you can't go into court without yelling "f you" at the judge, then don't take my you know don't do this. <laughs> don't, I don't can't imagine doing that. Like I'd be I'd yelling be way at the judge? too afraid to like right. yell at anybody or swear. Yeah. Um, no, I because then you will go to jail. Like if you go into a parking ticket trial where the maximum fine you're facing in Keene, New Hampshire, is five dollars. If you go into a parking ticket dry, a trial and tell the judge to go f himself, then you're going to get a contempt of court charge so guys, and you're going to jail right then. <laughs> the lesson here that we need to learn is that we should all go out and park illegally so that we can get a parking ticket and get I some no practice in court. It. <laughs> it can be done. I've, do- I've gotten the ticket. I've taken it to court. I'm totally and joking. And you've beaten one, too. I'm totally joking, of course. And I haven't beaten any of them. Really? I, have, I, thought, I had it dropped. Um, That's a win, dude. Okay. You, you beat it. But this is the point that I'd like to say uh, to, to make on this is that they really do get you. Um, that's what their their um, their whole thing is is to make this arduous for you. And they'll call me. They'll call you in on a, on a parking ticket, a five dollar parking t- ticket in Keene, New Hampshire, and I'm sure it's more uh, other places. They'll oh, yes. call you in to sort of you know get your plea and see whether or not you're willing to uh, you sure. know to take a plea or whatever it is. But you so, can also waive that uh, that hearing, right? If you but know what I you're didn't doing. know that, and right. that's the problem. Um, I'm not that interested in getting good at taking parking tickets to trial. <laughs> and yeah, then the thing is, the, once you start taking them to trial, they start dropping them. It, well, they they did that the first time, yeah. and then the, I wrote a blog post that says, "Hey, you don't have to pay these things; just take them to trial." <laughs> and then they took me to trial. Okay, all um, right. Well, there's no guarantees, right? You can't. There are certainly none. You can't predict. Derek J just got a parking ticket dropped the other day. It's he blogged true. about it over at freekeen.com. It's certainly true. Yeah. And then, um, you know, uh, once you get to court, then it's a you know I mean, this is a rubber stamp uh, you know situation. You're not gonna you're not getting out of this, and you'll get out of it if the uh, state's witness doesn't show up. That's that's true. That's, I, there's, there's look, there's multiple ways to get out of a ticket if you don't plead guilty and pay it, right? But the so, point I'm trying to make here, Ian, is is for for five dollars I can buy back hours from my life mm-hmm. from these rapacious vultures. I don't want them in my life. You're part Ian. of the problem. Man. <laughs> I am not the, part of the problem. You're, They're part of the problem, and you're blaming the victim. No, no, <laughs> that's no. right. I walked through the wrong section of town wearing the wrong clothes. I deserve to get raped. That's no, not what I'm saying. I, I look the if, fact. Is are we allowed to say know. that word on air? Raped? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you are. The fact is, oh. Mark, that um, and, and the only reason I talk to you like this is because you know, you know, where I'm coming <laughs> from on this. They know that it's not worth your time to fight a five dollar parking ticket. That's why the ticket's five dollars instead of five hundred dollars because they know that people are just gonna. Uh, Damn it. They're going to pay the fine. They're going to make it go away because nobody wants to go to court because, as Lauren pointed out, it it's scary. It sucks to be in court. It's dangerous. You don't know what they're going to do, and it's intimidating. So I don't blame I, someone. I really have way too much to do to go to court. For I don't blame you. Look, I don't blame anybody for not going to court individually. But collectively, Sorry. the fact that people don't go to court and the fact that people pay fines is why we have, partially, why we have the system we Did have. Did you just make a collectivist argument? Absolutely. No. Collectivist, yeah. um, It's no. a true statement. The fact is, if most people, not, not even if most people, if a minority of people would refuse to take would refuse to pay the fines and would instead challenge a parking ticket or a speeding ticket the courts would become so overburdened with cases they would have to drop charges sure. and object- have to pay more for court fees but objectivist girl this is my problem with objectivism <laughs> my problem is is that objectivists tend to be supporters of small government they tend to be hey let's uh, support tend the military to be. tend to be right they, let's support actually, the military actually that tendency is shifting but we'll talk about that in a minute okay. we'll let you finish your point as a person in the military especially um, say in the past, Past when when people tend to be conscribed to the military, y- your best choice was to run away in battle rather than fight 
because the people that fight fought were going up against other people that were fighting, and uh, you know, getting away was much better uh, sort of for, uh, for you. So they, the fact that they support the military, but then the military has counter incentives of run, running away, what they call a market failure, always confused me about objectivism. Wait, if you run away, doesn't the government like don't they prosecute you? Isn't that like a thing that, you get thrown in jail as a as um, you'd probably be better way, better off not running in the battle, like running away then, just refusing to go to the battle. I think you'd be better no, off. Generals in the, the past, Russians would shoot you for that. If you it, ran generals away. in the past would burn bridges behind their troops mm-hmm. in order to to make them fight. Wow. Um, so you could always yeah. just eat cotton balls. Just don't go and then out you there. You don't have to go. Just at don't go all. out in the first place. Not sure what cotton balls have to do with. But them. yeah, you create right, like a black spot. Oh. Yeah, but you're right, Lauren. Uh, if you if you physical. don't if you don't do what they say, they will pers- uh, prosecute you. They for will. It. And by the way, I just want to add. But real- you're safer in a jail cell than you are out on the battlefield. Yeah, I want to add real quickly that actually it's turning tides are turning that um, majority of objectivists are starting to become anarchists. So we'll come back with yeah. more. You can take control here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live. Attention. Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-951-9415. 1-800-951-9415. Call 1-800-951-9415. 1-800-951-9415. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here. Bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Those other talk show hosts charge you for their sites. Ours is free. Again, freetalklive.com. Is privacy dead? Not if we have anything to say about it. On November the 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join them in person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage exactly how much data they're sharing on the Internet. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community, and the winners will receive a prize package, including the all-new Black Phone, a secure-by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free, and registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. Hackthetrackers.com. All right. So we'll continue here with the discussion regarding taking tickets to court. And there is a real disincentive. There's a real reason to not do this. It takes time. It's scary. Uh, it's frustrating, and uh, nobody wants to spend their precious time doing something that is frightening, frustrating, and frustrating. You know, de- hard to deal with. So frightening, frustrating, and frustrating. And frustrating. Yeah, because it can, it can <laughs> be double frustrating. frustrating. Uh, and it really can be. You know, court's a scary place. So I don't blame anyone individually for this. Like, you should do what's right for you. I totally understand. Look, if you if you want to take a plea deal, I understand. I've never asked anyone to take a plea deal. I only suggest it. I only recommend it not as... Not to take a plea deal. Yeah, yeah. At, right. To not say, Thank you. I only recommend not taking the plea deal because I believe that's what's best in the long run for all of us who care about freedom. So these government bureaucrats are out there handing out tickets left and right. The parking enforcers are out writing, I don't know how many, you know, wherever you live, it's probably hundreds or thousands or dozens or depending on the size of your town, a lot of tickets every single day. What if 10% of those people said, yeah, I'd like my guaranteed right to a trial for this ticket? 10%. If they did, then likely the court system would decide a different way about going to adjudicate um, that. They would say that- Could they just make that decision without legislative change? They'll, they probably, probably, just, they'll probably just pass new legislation that says that not, you can't- you can't go up against tickets. Okay. In some states they may be able to just pass legislation on the count on the town level and, and other places they might have to go all the way to the state, but I'll true. I'll remind you in the state they uh, when the bureaucrats call the lawmakers, they get what they, they, get want. What they want. Yeah, who's going to stop them? I mean The Free State Project. That's who will stop them. And the people who come no offense, here to New sweetheart, Hampshire. And I love your optimism and I'm an optimistic person, mm-hmm. but we have not been able to stop them. What are you talking about? Didn't you hear about last year? There's been plenty of uh, bad bills that uh, liberty activists in New Hampshire have stopped. Uh, Here's one example for you. Within this last year, uh, there was a proposal by the police departments of New Hampshire to acquire what are called license plate scanners in all of the other states, the police have these devices. And we were they, able to stop that. They use them on the sides of the roads. They have them mounted onto all their police, to many police cruisers, and it allows them to easily computerized scan people's license plates and run them, you know, run checks against them. That was stopped cold 
uh, in the New but Hampshire I'd be, Senate and I'd, State I would House. wonder how many other groups got on board with this. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, it think, doesn't matter the, because what matters is if liberty activists here can combine their efforts with other groups and they can tip the scales in the direction of more freedom. You, I, I understand you're probably jaded towards the political system because you're relatively new here. I'm going through a little period. Uh-huh. You know, we all go through a little cycles um, when even when you're here. Um, did especially you know free when stater, you're here. Did you know that a free stater who was elected to state rep was responsible for putting forth a bill that eliminated the knife laws in New Hampshire? Uh, wasn't that Jen Coffey? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So there's Jen another Coffey one. is awesome. There's another one for you. Um, Liberty activists worked on the jury nullification bill, which isn't perfect. But we couldn't stop the bear cat. Nope, you couldn't well, the stop cat, the Bearcat. The Bearcat was free. Let's not forget, this is a free armored truck being given to the uh, to a city. It was unlikely to stop them. What the Bearcat was an opportunity for was to look good in yeah. national press. And the Bearcat got the Free State Project, or got a mention on the Colbert Report. And, or, and what, other places. Yeah, and other well. places. So the I would call the, uh, the Bearcat thing a, a success, even though we didn't get rid of it. Right. Okay. So well, look, there's you can't win them all, Lauren. I, mean, I know we can't win them all, especially not at this early point in the the Free State Project game. I don't know. I'm at this point in where I just I'm torn between thinking that philosophy is the way to change society mm-hmm. and uh, or politics. Why does it have to be one or the other? I, it doesn't have to be one or the other, but I think that one needs to come before the other, and I'm starting to question which one it is. I think that you have to change people's minds before politics will come along. See, that's what I've always thought. And then what there's, there's a point to be made for, you know, getting people like Ron Paul in who mm-hmm. is has a more has a bigger presence and is able to actually change the way people think. But like, you know, then there's, you know, news shows that could push like, you know, Ben Swan or uh, even Colbert. Mm-hmm. Um who are able to change ethics. But at the same time, like, you know, it's it's becoming a chicken or the egg situation for me. I don't know why. I mean, I don't think you should feel that way. I really don't. Because ultimately, you, don't? you can choose how you approach things, but you would never will be able to, you know, convince everybody to approach things in the same way that you are. I guess. So ultimately, everybody's going to follow their own volition and their own incentives. So some people are going to be really excited and jazzed up about running political campaigns, and others are like you are going to make media and songs and, you know, uh, t- TV shows and things like that to help educate people. So it all works together. <laughs> Songs is my favorite one, but yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it comes from this last primary election. Um, you know, there were many, many nights before that election that I didn't sleep. Um, I stayed up all night and got, I think I got three hours of sleep in two weeks. And Just helping on campaigns? Yeah. Tr- well, no, fighting Scott Brown and fighting. This is some politician who's yeah, running here he's in awful. New Hampshire. Oh, my God. He's he, a, from Massachusetts Yeah, or and he's completely in the pocket of these lobbyists. Okay. I mean, it's awful. But anyway, he's one of the worst politicians I can think of. Um, and so. <laughs> Besides the person he's running against. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah and that's just how it goes. So what and, are you saying? You're burned is, out? Is or that, what, what are you getting at? I, I think that might be it. But I've gotten to the point where, like. Even the mere mention of fighting policy or trying to work towards getting people elected is like, I just want to shove it to the side. Then shove it to the side. I mean, you shouldn't do what you're- maybe, Maybe my thing is not supposed to be- Getting involved in politics. You Maybe shouldn't my do something is... that you don't feel passionate about. You shouldn't do something that you don't feel like you sh- you should be a part of. I mean, I don't feel educate. obligated. I want to educate and change the culture, and that's what really drives. Then me. focus on that, and I think I should do that. I don't, I don't know. Put all your energy into but that. Part than... of me wants to get involved in the political stuff too, well, because mm. I think the danger I of it is a lot of you when, know when, ability in that realm. I have a background in PR and branding and all those things. Okay, I I'd think be when great we, at that. When we try to pigeonhole ourselves and pigeonhole other people, that's when we get in, in, into trouble. If you should. You should do what you feel like doing at the time. And the thing about political campaigns is there'll always be another one. If you're going to ride yeah, one out, true. ride it. You just just ride it out, you know. Um, and if you want to participate, then participate. I don't think we should shame other people for what their participation is and the way they go about trying to. I totally agree. Oh, I'm so with you. 450 free is the toll-free number. Do what you feel is right. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. 
and it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season, like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit Promote.LRN.FM for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free and bring up anything at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got a website at freetalklive.com. You can download archives and more. All there completely free. Uh, once again, that's freetalklive.com. Tonight in studio, Ian here with you. And Lauren Rumpler. And Mark. All right, so let's continue. We've actually got other stuff in the news to discuss here tonight. Uh, the Robin Hood case, actually, we really didn't talk much about that. There's a piece done by the uh, local TV station here in New Hampshire, WMUR, that kind of goes over a little bit of what happened in court. If you want to see the full 
court video, uh, all you have to do is go to freekeen.com, the full Supreme Court video where the Robin Hooders, uh, I was one of them, uh, six of us were sued by the city of Keene because we were saving people from getting parking tickets in downtown Keene, New Hampshire, <laughs> saving literally thousands of people over an entire year. And costing year. the city tens of thousands. And yes, and the city, of course, uh, did not receive the money they would have normally received from the, all those tickets they would have normally written, and therefore $80,000 or so stu- uh, stayed in the pockets of the people, in the you, pockets of the motorists. You know, Ian... I wasn't laughing because you you have saved several people from parking tickets, and that's awesome, and I think that's really cool. But, like, I was just thinking about how they would have said what you just said, <laughs> and it it wouldn't have been saving people. What, how the and city I'm, would have said it? You yeah, how they would have painted it yeah, the they opposite paint us way. It's just funny sometimes dogs. when you, like, listen to somebody tell their side of the story and then think about how the other side is probably painting it and oh, it's yeah. just very it's very funny and i'm sorry i no, just it's, i it's thought fine. that was a little they humorous totally, they totally paint us as though we're some sort of band of thugs going around threatening intimidating and harassing their employees which of course is completely you're giving fallacious. free money <laughs> yeah. well it's totally they're totally lying about the the robin like actually Hooders. free money well, Instead of the to the state, I guess. Free money. Uh, and it helps keep the money in the hands and the pockets of the motorists as well when we save them from getting tickets. So that's uh-huh. why we got sued. And ultimately, we won at the Superior Court level, actually on a dis- motion to dismiss. So the case never even went to trial. Uh, it was dismissed before trial on free speech grounds, essentially. And- you should have asked if they had... Um- if they had given you a, a a choice between a fine or jail time, you should pick the fine, and then oh, it was civil. It was a civil case, so oh. uh, there's no criminal charges here. Well, it Remember, would have been great to have us. you like fundraise for it because if you've ever been saved by us, mm. yeah. Well, the Robin Hooders they Would've already awesome. ask for donations from people, and you know the donations that come in aren't enough to really you know pay anybody to Robin Hood necessarily. There were a couple there were a couple of angels who were kind of coming in and helping pay some of the Robin Hooders to really incentivize them to go out cool. and, and do it. Uh, but just if you were to just go on donations alone, it would have been a volunteer uh, activity. But so anyway, the case went to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. We can talk more about that here in a moment. I've got the video and we'll play some of that. Wayne is first though listening in Raleigh, North Carolina to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Wayne. Hello. Welcome. Sir. Yes, I've actually taken a, well, one ticket I actually took to court. Uh, it was a ticket for running a stop sign, and it was completely bogus. And I don't know why the cop ever thought he was going to, you know, win the case. I guess figuring it, 90% of the people never show up. Yeah, I'm know, wondering how you could get how you could beat a, a running the stop sign, because if they say, yeah, he did, and you say, no, I didn't, then yeah. how would you beat this? Well, uh, you know, I actually in this state, in North Carolina, if you look at the law, there's no difference between a stop sign and a yield sign, except that a stop sign is supposed to be erected at a more dangerous intersection. Okay. So technically, Interesting. as long as there's no traffic coming, as long as you see your way clear and yield to whatever traffic would have the right-of-way, Really? And basically, the the, the 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 charge is there for an accident to be able to charge somebody wow. with the accident. Yeah, for failing to yield the right of way. I wonder how many states are like that because you know, in a lot of cases, when people get charged with something, they never go to read the statute. They just cut the check. They want to make it go away. But you actually took the time to read the statute, and you knew that uh, what you did wasn't illegal. Well, and the irony of it was, I never had to bring any of that evidence in in you know into into the case. Mm-hmm. The uh, judge just asked me, he says, "Did uh, oh?" And he was he was an old folksy judge. I mean, this guy was the best judge that ever sat on the bench here in 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 Wake County, mm-hmm. and he was known for you know treating people fair. And when I you know I was hoping he'd be the judge that I'd have for my case. And really, he never let the officer say a word. He just asked me, did you do it? And I said, no. And he, he had a way of re- being able to read um, people's whether they were lying or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was just that kind of a person. And so I got off on that one. But just previous to that, I had another 
I had in this I just ran a, a string of bad luck with the police. But previous to that, I got a, a speeding ticket, which was legit. But I myself went to the district attorney, and he gave me three options. He told me, well, this is what this one's going to do to you. This one's going to do that one. Which one do you want? And so I plea bargained my own my own case without ever needing a lawyer. Excellent. That's a huge money saver. I mean, yeah, you've got to spend a little bit of time on it. But congratulations to you, Wayne. Thanks for sharing your story tonight. I appreciate that. Let's talk to Daryl listening in Austin, Texas. The first step is to take it to trial. Yeah, well, if you don't take it to trial, you're guaranteed to lose. If you do take it to trial, you're probably going to lose, but there's a chance you may actually beat it by virtue of the cop doesn't show up for trial or by virtue of that, you know, you actually read the statute and turns out you didn't break the law or the cop was lying or whatever the evidence they collected was cr- collected wrong. There's all kinds of options that open up sure. once you take it to trial. Or at the worst, you know, worst case, you say you're going to take it to trial, then they come back with a better plea deal offer and then you take that one just because it's that much better. Right. <laughs> You don't just lay down your hand when somebody uh, calls it in poker, and that's the same thing with plea bargains. Right, and even if you uh, do go to trial, uh, you can in some cases get the case put on file. So even if you go through, like it's a speeding ticket, if you've never gotten a speeding ticket before, in a lot of cases you can go through the trial, the judge will find you guilty, and then you can ask the judge, hey, can you just put that on file? Can we have this put on file? And that means that it, you know, the charge doesn't actually affect you. That it's you got the guilty, but it's sort of put out there, and it's not really in the same way as a real guilty. Does it not affect your um, insurance? I don't believe that it does. So, but you have to know about this stuff. You have to know to ask about it. Let's go to Daryl. You're in Austin. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Daryl. Yes, um, I had posted on Facebook about that I was moving from Austin to to New Hampshire for the next eighteen, twelve to eighteen months. Very exciting. You asked me about. That Austin's libertarian. Well, it's not really libertarian. Um, I've heard up, there are a thousand libertarians in Austin, Texas. Well, there may be. Um, unfortunately, since I'm a single guy though. with two young boys, <laughs> it's kind of hard to meet them. Mm. But, so, and, so, are uh, they, so what you're saying is that if there are libertarians in Austin, you don't really see much about what they're doing? Yeah, you got to remember the, the largesse of the state compared to New Hampshire. New Hampshire is extremely small. Sure. Uh, so oh, to yeah. have, I mean, a thousand libertarians there is like, you know, like... Five libertarians. Well, my Hampshire. question is, are they a thousand activists? I highly doubt that as well. That's the other thing. So tell us more about your experience down there, Daryl, and how long have you been down there? I've been here since May of 2013, um, and the city is they're, they're giving up more and more laws. Starting January, they're going to start ticketing people for, for, for using their cell phones while driving. Now yeah, they're doing that in um, New Hampshire, too. They're doing that all over the country. Oh, I know, but they, they they pretty much shoved it down our throats, and we didn't want it. We have toll roads all over the place, and the problem is it's like a $2 toll, but if you don't pay it within a certain period of time, it can go up to like 60 bucks. Mm. Yeah, I, I noticed that when I was – actually, we went down to Austin last year for the Bitcoin uh, – Texas Bitcoin conference that happened. And I had to go to Walmart at one point during the conference to go and get some like network cable or something like that. And so I went on some of these toll roads and I just it seemed very Orwellian. Like they don't even have humans. They have these cam they have these stations. Well the humans are what cost money in the these toll roads. I understand that, Mark, but it didn't make it seem less like at least if it's a human, you can make eye contact with somebody. In this case, uh, it's just like some sort of robot that takes a picture of you and so there's this big flash as you go, even ah! during the daytime. You can notice this flash going through there. Daryl, if you want to hang on, tell us more about why you're leaving Austin to move to New Hampshire. I'd love to hear about it. More coming up in moments. I think he hung up. No, he didn't. 855 uh. 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. 
I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step -step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now, 1-888-912-1595, 1-888-912-1595. That's 1-888-912-1595, 1-888-912-1595. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting and we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw, Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here and bring up anything that you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. Skype on in at username lrn.fm. And those toll-free numbers are brought to you by ProXPN. What is it? A global virtual private network. They encrypt your data online. And that means that your internet service provider, once you start using ProXPN, your ISP will not know what you're doing right now. They're probably logging all the websites you visit, saving your surfing history for, in some cases, as long as five years. You can get started with ProXPN for free right now by going to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Doesn't matter what device you're using, your smartphone with iOS or Android or your laptop or desktop with Windows or Macintosh, even Linux. Those setups a little bit different for Linux. Just go and get started over at ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade to the premium package, you'll get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent with their premium package, plus get past regionally blocked websites. And ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits. So you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and the money is pretty low. Five bucks a month is what you'll be paying if you use our discount code. Our code is FTL50. That's FTL, like Free Talk Live, the number 50, as in 50% 50 off the premium account for the annual account. Uh, and if you want an even better deal, pay with Bitcoin and use this code, FTLBTC, and you'll save 62% off of that annual account. By the way, those codes will be good for the lifetime of the account, no matter which option you choose. 
So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. Daryl had uh, called in tonight. He's still with us listening in Austin, Texas. You say you moved to Austin back in 2013. Now, what what drove you to move there in the first place? Was it a job, family? Or what was your motivation? Um, I'm actually originally from Texas. I was living in Norfolk, Virginia area. Mm-hmm. And um, and I moved there because I was, I was moved there to move back home to Texas. And that's why I came to Austin, for how great Austin was back, you know, when I was a little kid, when I lived here for about a year. Okay. And it's obviously not the same place. Uh, traffic here is horrible, as you probably have seen. Um, they want to build an urban rail, which is a pretty much a billion-dollar boondoggle. And then... Child care, since I'm a single dad with two young boys going to, to go to daycare, um, child care during the summer is like 400 bucks a week for me, which is more than my rent. Wow. And like wow. In places like Florida, which which I know you're from Florida, I am. places like Florida where they don't have as many regulations for child care is like half the price. And the thing, though, is, is there were people who were doing unlicensed daycare hmm. To help people out who don't have money, so the state went around to shut them down because, of course they you know, did. God forbid, people choose who they want to take care of their kids. You know, one of the things that's nice about New Hampshire is while there still are some licenses they have here, I believe it is the lowest burden of all the states that New Hampshire licenses. I could be wrong about this. It's definitely one of the lowest. Uh, the, one of the lowest burdens as far as licensed occupations. There just aren't as many licensed occupations in New Hampshire as compared to other states. And maybe if we can get enough people to move here and to get active, then we can see some of that stuff get repealed here as well. So, like, Actually, there's a, I'm currently working on that. On repealing licensure? Mm-hmm. That's very exciting. I love that idea. I think it's a great idea. Let the market decide to certify people. Oh, you, should, you should be able to hear how many points that they inspect a home daycare on. They have over 1,700 line items they inspect them on. Wow. That's crazy. So that is you're, crazy. And over, so, over 2,300 for, like, the big daycares. So you heard you about know, the Free State Project. How'd you come across that? Oh, yes. I, I'm a member of it. Um, I joined it a while back, and uh, I came here first, and I realized, heck, I should have gone to New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah, you'd have saved a little bit of money. But, you know, live and learn, right? So what uh, what turned you on to the Free State Project? Well, um. My mom used to live in New Hampshire years ago, and so I'd been there a few times. Oh, okay. And so I know beautiful, I'm not isn't it? People there. Oh, it's beautiful. And plus, one, one advantage that uh, New Hampshire has to Austin is you can't snow ski in Austin. <laughs> it's true. True that. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, yeah. you know what? Uh, you should come on up and check out New Hampshire when you get a chance. I know you visited here previously, but come up during one of the events that happens. There's a Free State Project puts on two yearly events. One of them is the Liberty Forum, which is coming up in March. And uh, it's early March this year. You can go to, is it libertyforum.com? I think that's what it is. And then there's also Pork Fest, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which is a summertime yearly event in the sort of in the camping style. So Liberty Forum's like a convention hotel style thing, camping at uh, Pork Fest, P O R C F E S T dot com. Oh, I do plan on eventually attending Pork Fest and yeah. the Liberty Forum. It's just uh, just getting you know certain certain money issues out of the way. Well, if you know you're going to really... move, like if if you are yeah. certain you're going to move to New Hampshire, then I would recommend not visiting. Yeah. I would just recommend saving up for the move and figuring out to where you would like to move and then just making the move. That's what I did. I never visited New but Hampshire. Yeah, that's what I asked Lauren on Facebook and she she recommend I become a social butterfly, so I've been trying to do that. Oh, it's nice to hear from you, by the way. We're very excited to have you. I told uh, a bunch yeah. of my friends from the Rebel Love Show that you'll be visiting, and we're excited to give you a tour of New Hampshire when you get here and cool. introduce you to everybody. But um, I wanted to add, before we move on, that actually to find out about Liberty Forum, you want to go to freestateproject.org slash events slash liberty dash forum. That gotcha. is way too long. I know there is or, a shorter Or URL. you can type into Google Liberty Forum 2015. That'll work. It's actually NH Liberty Forum. That's what it is. Is it's, it? It's nhlibertyforum.com. Okay. That's the short URL that'll forward you to the right place on the Free State Project site. Daryl, anything else you want to share tonight about your decision and why you're making the move? No, I think that's about it. And uh, you guys are having a great show. And I like to tell Objectionist Girl that I really enjoy her videos on YouTube. Thanks. Aww, She's, thank uh, you. I know you're working on some new video projects, uh, I Lauren am. Rumpler. So, I'm very uh, excited. I'll be having a big announcement in December. Cool. Looking forward to that. I'm sure you'll be making it here on Free Talk Live. <laughs> 
Yep. All right, Daryl, thanks for the call tonight. Good luck with the uh, the trip to New well, Hampshire when you get to it. Uh, yeah, it definitely is important to save up. You know, you want to make sure you've got a nest egg before you come up to New Hampshire. You don't want to just throw caution to the no. wind. And uh, to, to be fair, some people have just kind of come up here with, you know, a few bucks in their pocket and the gas tank to get them here. But And it's worked and out it for worked them. it worked out. Some I mean, people have. But I barely others, had hasn't. any money yeah. when I came here. Um, and it all worked out. I mean... I have a really good job and I get to work, uh, I get to do liberty for a living, mainly because I wasn't afraid to be poor for a period of time mm. um, and pursue my dream job. And so now I get to work for the Atlas Society um, right now. I'm their intern. And um, so it's it's great and it's awesome to be able to do something I'm so passionate about. And there's so many different Liberty organizations that you can actually get involved with and get a job with here in New Hampshire. It's awesome. There's like AFP, there's SFL, there's, um, which is Americans, are, yeah. Americans for Prosperity, Students for Liberty, Young Americans for Liberty. And you really can't course, bank on being able the to Atlas be a, Society. a money-making activist. You probably should bank on whatever skills it is that you have to carry you through. But but there are opportunities like right. that. There's, There's no doubt also about it. a lot of really talented porks out here. So if you ever porks really are wanted porcupines, porcupines, which is the mascot sorry. for the Free State Project. I'm, ta- I'm talking Free State lingo. Anyway, um, if you wanted to ever start a company, this is a great place to find communications people and even programmers. Um, we have some really amazing programmers. Yeah, here. we do need more entrepreneurs. We do need more people with capital, with ideas to come up here. And and I think those people are coming it's just it takes them longer you know if you're a single person that's relatively unattached in the world then it's not a big deal to you know move from one point to another but if you've already got a business if you're if you are tied down with a house and a family then obviously it takes more time to sort of cut those ties and tie up the loose ends and then yeah you know, that's one here. of the things that i would i would say a lot of people that are graduating from college that love the free state project decide not to move up here right away and i think that's a big mistake yeah it is because then you're going to get dug in you are you're going to get dug in somewhere and you're going to find something that you love doing instead you'll meet some you know girl or guy and then yeah, you know they'll he, tie you down oh i don't want to go to new hampshire but right if you move to new hampshire and then meet the girl or guy you're right go. and what you want to do is i would say in your last year of college really save up um and, advice. and move out here because honestly, just graduating from college and moving straight here is the best decision. That There's you can really make. no better time. I mean, there as is far as not. the only other better time is like if you lose a job, like if you've been or saving, or if you just get divorced. This is the best place to one. get over your yeah, divorce. There's been a few people who have done that. Yeah, <laughs> we, it is nicknamed the divorce date project. So <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, support groups for that. There have been so. some people who've moved and then gotten a divorce. That has happened too, but yeah. it's usually worked out for them too. Yeah. They usually just get somebody better, and so does the other person. Better, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, I mean, come on up. I, I mean, it wasn't a divorce, but I was in a five-year relationship when I left. Um, and so, so that you left was, a relationship to come here. Yeah, five years. Wow. And that was like a divorce. And I mean, you've when got you're like together three relationships. for when you're together for five years, you really you don't need a piece of paper for it to feel yeah, like a divorce. Sure. So, um, but we're still really good friends, and That's hopefully, you'll move up here eventually. That'd be cool. So, we're talking about the Free State Project. You can check it out if you love liberty. Now, if you love the state and you love controlling people, then you don't need to come to New Hampshire. Don't come. Uh, <laughs> you will hate life here. Because more freedom-loving people are coming here constantly and making things better for people that care about freedom. Freestateproject.org. Go check that out. There's more coming up here in moments on Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,230, silver opened at $17.21, and Bitcoin is trading around $395. Today's metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, the United Nations Special Rapporteur for Counterterrorism and Human Rights has released a report detailing how mass surveillance programs are a violation of privacy rights protected by treaties and conventions. The special rapporteur told the UN General Assembly that there's a large difference between targeted surveillance aimed at specific suspects and mass surveillance of large portions of the population. The report called mass surveillance incompatible with existing concepts of privacy and stated that although there may be legitimate justifications for such measures, none of the countries involved have shown a detailed and evidence-based public justification for its necessity. Police briefly scuffled with protesters camped out in Hong Kong streets overnight, but held back from dismantling barricades erected by the activists pushing for greater democracy in the Chinese territory. Earlier this week, Police had removed barriers on the edges of the protest zones. Later, they occupied an underpass that police then cleared out aggressively, using pepper spray and dragging activists away. The search for 43 missing college students continues in Mexico, as authorities announced that bodies recently found in a mass grave did not match the students. On Monday, hundreds of protesters, including teachers, gathered in the capital of Guerrero and clashed with riot police broke windows, and set flames to a government building. The protesters are calling for an investigation into police corruption and accusing the officers of being connected to the same cartel believed to have taken the students. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. Detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Jessica Armand would like to thank Liberty Beat listeners for all their support. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty News and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Around 7 million passwords from the file hosting service Dropbox have been hacked through a third-party service. Someone posted 400 of the passwords on Pastebin and promised to post more for Bitcoin. The hackers' claims of possessing nearly 7 million passwords have been denied by Dropbox. Heated battles over water fluoridation continue around the world. In Dublin, Ireland, city council members passed a motion that will stop fluoridating Ireland's water supply. Ireland is one of the few remaining nations with a mandatory water fluoridation policy. Israel's health minister faces backlash over a unilateral decision to stop fluoridating the nation's water. A group of dentists and health professionals are appealing the decision to the High Court of Justice, saying that the decision will cause harm to public health. 
In Texas, Houston and Dallas activists continue to campaign for fluoride-free water. The group Activists for Truth is bringing Dr. Paul Conant of the Fluoride Action Network to a hearing on water fluoridation on October 19th and 20th. Fluoride Free Houston, meanwhile, continued their visits to city council for the third week in a row. The group has so far garnered support from two city council members and attracted the attention of Houston's health community. Cleared of the murder that had put him behind bars for almost 30 years, David McCallum sobbed and thought of the man who wasn't there with him. Co-defendant Willie Stuckey's conviction had also just been thrown out after Brooklyn District Attorney Kenneth Thompson concluded the two confessed falsely as teenagers to kidnapping and killing a stranger and taking a joyride in his car. But Stuckey wasn't in court Wednesday to be freed. He died in prison in 2001. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 16th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Joe Chris Beckman. From claim jumpers to politicians to coyotes, the straight shooter that shook up the presidential race is taking them all on and licking them good. Hello, Joe. Who and what's behind these potato monkey shines? Well, these scientists are trying to mass produce potatoes that are more resistant to disease, but they're doing so in potentially dangerous ways that alter their DNA. Tater disease, and what brung us Irish? Right. You give a Tater man's constitution, you can bet he's coming to play old Joe to call. Yes, well, nature's revenge could come in the form of disease now you listen or to allergens. Me, taters. You got gave a mind of a tater. Joe, please, l l let me make my point. You're tater minded and you're looking to infiltrate old Joe's cabin, but you're too late. No. Now you get out, All or right, I'll Joe. slice your tater heart out and fry it up on my okay, grill. Okay, Joe. Now you all stay close, you. Gonna have my jug band back here and the Jasper don't let me strum the worst part. We're gonna resort to cutting. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three with you tonight, Ian here. And Lauren Rumpler, Objectivist Girl. And Mark. All right, so we've been all over the place between what happened to me in court this morning, and we got a guy who called in just a moment ago saying he's leaving Texas to make the move to New Hampshire. Woohoo! It's part of the Free State Project, so it's always great news. Uh, Mark, let's change gears a little bit here, get away from the issues, get away from the system, and talk about an institution that's not the state. Well, marriage. sort of, not the state. Sort, sort of, sort of. <laughs> From it, my it wasn't yeah. intended to be the state. MyFoxDC.com, new data shows more young people are waiting to marry. There's no shortage of opinions on why that's happening. According to the latest available census data, the percentage of U.S. adults who have never been married hit an all-time high. Hmm. In 1960, about 1 in 10 adults over the age of 25 fell into that category. That's um, percentage who have never been married, over 25. By 2012, that number had jumped to one in five. And that's a big difference. I mean, uh, you're, you're talking about a doubling in the short of, uh, in the, in the, you know, just, uh, what, five decades. Okay. I'm wondering if marriage, like, what is marriage going to look like in the future? Polyamory. Maybe, I suppose. <laughs> well, Lauren, I you are a polyamorist. What does that mean? Polyamorist? I, I don't think I've ever heard is the term polyamorist. The right term? Is that not the right term? I, I, it's a thing now. I like it. You you follow polyamory, it's so wouldn't so that be a polyamorist? It's so close to polygamy. Okay. Polygamist. Uh, I worry about it, but here's the difference. Pol so okay, yeah, polygamy please. is when you marry multiple people, which sounds awful, um, <laughs> to me at least. Um, <laughs> yeah. Polyamory is just when you have meaningful relationships with multiple people. By meaningful, you mean intimate, like sex, no, sexual relationships? No, 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 no. And this is the thing about that I like about polyamory. Polyamory recognizes that, and I think other people do, but especially people who are in polyamorous relationships, recognize that sex is not the defining quality of being, of having a connection with someone. Okay. Now, we don't, 
I there I have partners I don't have sex with. I have partners that I do have sex with. Um Defi- and okay. everything in between. This is this is new to me, right? Because I mean, I've been in open relationships yeah. before. Um, but it usually had to do Dad, with who you could have sex with. Open. See, I don't like the term open relationship okay. because it implies the idea that, yeah, you can sleep with whoever you want. Polyamorous relationships, normally um, all of us kind of have a relationship with one another. Yeah. So my partners know each other. They've engaged with one another. They're friends. Right. Uh, that's ideal situation I agree with is that. they're friends. That's ideal. Um. And that's the thing is that it's loving relationships. And so, um, you know, the way... But I love my friends, but not in the same way I love my girlfriend. Agreed. Um, But you have to remember that... Does that make me unpolyamorous? The the way that we express, and this is why I say poly is the only thing that's logical, um, because the way that we, we feel emotions is this huge wide array of things there's this huge scale that can't be defined i mean the greeks were closer to it than we were with um with agape and okay. um, you know all those different words different words for love right gotcha. but even that missed the Pileos. point there's so many different feelings there's a huge range of feelings that you can feel for, for people and when i want to kiss someone I shouldn't feel like I can't Mm -hmm. because, you know, somebody's going to get mad at me for, you know, using my lips on their lips. Like, it's ridiculous. Okay, I I see where you're coming from. They don't own my body. They don't don't own my body. Some people get mad. There's no doubt about that. And that's ridiculous. In in my mind. I am totally with you there. I just want to try to define polyamorous because I find it's sort of a. Now it's more nebulous than it was before. It is. Because and I it's see what you're saying. It's a little like, difficult to understand, but polyamorous just understands. It's the understanding that you're going to have different relationships with different people. Right. So I have, you know, I have friends, which are basically the people that I define as like, I don't have any intimate contact with them. I don't kiss them. I don't do anything. As soon as we have a, at least a kissing relationship, you're we're in a polyamorous relationship. Okay, because that makes sense of because that's a level of intimacy. That I have to tell my partners that I'm having this relationship with them. I don't right. tell my partners when I just made a new friend. I mean, well, I might you, because that's you, fun. Okay, but so like, the physical intimacy, though, that comes back to what I was saying about right. it before is that there's an intimacy. I didn't mean that it had to be sex, right. full-on sex. But, yeah, it makes oh, sense. That okay. Like, you have to draw a line somewhere, right? Because people who just have that's friends where I draw and it. a monogamous... Some people don't friend. draw it there. Some people have polyamorous relationships where you don't need to talk to your partners about, like, kissing other people. You can kiss whoever you want. Mm-hmm. But um, I like... I think the more you have. talk, the better. I think the yes. more you communicate, the and better. that's the thing is that the biggest significant factor in relationships is communication. Yes. And I yeah. find that Any a lot of, even though polyamorous people have their own issues, one of the issues they don't seem to have is communication because most polyamorous people over communicate. It's actually kind of a obnoxious well that was what i what went <laughs> wrong with and, and you know I, i'm fine with the idea that you don't care for the term open relationship i don't particularly care for it either it was just another way of describing polyamory right. uh the idea of an open relationship was that you should talk uh, to your partner you should be open about you your should. feelings for other people if you're having feelings for somebody else you should talk about that and be okay with it mm-hmm. and you know be loving towards your partner and accepting towards that right. but also at the same time being careful you know don't just go around having unprotected sex and that kind of thing like to to, to be open with your relationship. And love but, is a feeling, not a physical act. And so when I love sure. someone, of course I want to do certain physical things to a certain level with certain people. Um, like there may be people that I never am going to have sex with, but I would kiss. Mm-hmm. I mean, or, you know, other things. And, you know, I I enjoy being able to have that freedom to express my my emotions, my right, you feelings. You shouldn't feel restricted. You shouldn't right. feel like you can't be who you really are in a relationship. So that's where the right. term open relationship seemed to make sense. Right. But the problem I ran into in both of the times that I've tried open relationships was my partner was not open. <laughs> you know, So like they said they were going to be, and then they would hide their uh, their other relationship. And it's like, I know you're having sex with this other guy. Why don't you just talk to me? Yeah, you know? we, we, that's the thing is we grow up with monogamy being the norm unless you have polyamorous parents or in this weird situation pretty unlikely we all grow up thinking monogamy is the norm it's in all the television and movies yes and and it's it's kind of disgusting actually but that's okay we're not going to get into that the way movies portray it just like makes me 
ill. It makes me nauseous. Polyamory? Um, no, no, monogamy. 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 Okay. Like this this obsessive need for one another. It just it makes me completely ill. That there's this um, one person out there yeah, for you. Oh my thing. God, I've got to find him. And you know, that's the thing is that I have these wonderful relationships with um, my partners. And, you know, we have we have really amazing connections in different ways. And I was talking to you earlier during one of the breaks about one of the people that I was seeing that mm -hmm. that he didn't want to be polyamorous and he'd had that conversation with me. And he, you know, it was this choice between I either had to be monogamous and be able to have that relationship with him or be polyamorous and give him up. And now I'm always going to choose polyamory and I wouldn't have before like when I first started being polyamorous I was like this is awful I don't want to do this anymore if I can find a good monogamous relationship I'm going to do that and I tried monogamy again and I just couldn't do it the idea of just being with one person I have a lot of love in my heart like I have an almost overwhelming amount of love and so for most partners it's too, it's much. too much you're gonna it's suffocate them i'm gonna suffocate them and so it's easier for me to have multiple relationships where i can show love to different people and kind of spread all of it out and be more likely to stay together with yes those people too. and so now, do you have a primary do you have a relationship that you spend the most time with i used to think i, I kind of still do but i'm moving away from the idea of a primary but mm -hmm. yes i do have a primary i have somebody that i spend the majority of my time with um but it changes I mean um and I try not to classify or quantify m my feelings for people because again we just have this huge array of emotions and to try and quantify or classify it into like primary secondary tertiary or like even I love this person more no I just love this person differently let's bring this back around to marriage because Mark that's where we started with yeah marriages. this, has, uh, this article really has nothing to do with polyamory that's okay <laughs> though they're down but what is marriage like in a polyamorous relationship is it something that's even an option on the table oh, yeah. more coming up here in Mo and you can share your thoughts. 855 450 free. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. 
And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks, why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We will take your calls if you dial toll-free. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the latest on the Robin Hood saga here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, which is making international headlines. Uh, we can get into that here, but we're talking about marriage, and I want to continue that conversation. The numbers are down. Fewer people, younger people especially, are married today than in the uh, past decades. Mark has the story. We're going to continue that. Also, you need to know about the bounties that are available for collection right now. Bitcoin bounties. You go to BitcoinBountyHunter.com. And one of those bounties is worth 38 Bitcoins. Now, Bitcoins right now are getting close to $400 per Bitcoin. So that's a pretty significant bounty there. It's over 10 grand. Uh, you can place your own bounty or you can add to the ones that are already there. The authorities aren't going to be solving these cases. They'll be solved by people like you who can profit from your work and your skills. Go check out BitcoinBountyHunter.com. So, our toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. Your comments are welcome on polyamory. We just had a lengthy discussion with Lauren uh, Rumpler here in our studio tonight about polyamory. You are a self-described polyamorous person or a polyamorist. <laughs> Polyamorist. And, uh, and so like you, you have multiple relationships going on at once. You sort of described the, you drew the line uh, between just a regular friendship and someone you consider yourself polyamorous but that's with. that's just me. As kissing. Like if you kiss somebody, yes. then, so now you are actually that's in a polyamorous me. relationship with Daryl because I did see you kiss him earlier uh, tonight. Oh my God, you're a horrible person for spreading rumors. I did not do that. <laughs> oh my Wait a God, minute, what Ian. do you mean? Oh are, my God, Are you Ian. afraid to tell your boyfriends oh about that? Oh my God, Ian. Was that yeah. supposed this to be a secret? This is going to be a thing now. You did it on the camera, didn't you, earlier? <laughs> No! I think you did. I did I'm not. Pretty sure you were Ian's going to have to fact check that. At I'm, that I'm going to kill you, Ian. I I'm really am. I'm <laughs> pretty sure the camera was on and that you did it in front of it. Yes, it's the cameras are on. So. The cameras are on and you can yeah. check the camera. I never did I heard then. a smooching noise. I wasn't looking directly at you, though, so I guess I can't really say for sure. Why uh, are you inventorying her smooches? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, I, I'm, I I'm good at polyamory. I tell all my partners everything I do, and I did not kiss that man. <laughs> I did not have sexual relations <laughs> with that woman. <laughs> all right, I didn't mean to throw you under the bus there. Um, so uh, I think it's really important to take like a moment to really say that polyamory is not for everyone, mm. and it is not Neither right is monogamy. Or wrong, and monogamy right. is not for everyone, and is not right or wrong, and neither is being gay or straight or bisexual or pansexual or anything else. Good that point. You let your freak flag fly. 
do whatever you want to do, but it is your body and you make that decision. If you want to enter into a consensual contract to be with one person for the rest of your life and that rows your boat, then good luck. I would never do it. (laughs) But you're right. It's not for everybody. I think that's an important thing. We're not all alike, even though we're all humans and there's some similarities between us. Uh, yes. There are there are a lot of differences, and it's okay to respect that, and it's not okay to push your viewpoint on everybody else. Not oh, no. everybody no, has no, no, no. to be like you. The only reason that I think it's good to talk about is because it has become this weird thing in our country. Well, it's misunderstood. That, probably not even understood at all. Well, yeah, no, but it's worse than that is that people don't even know what it ex- that it exists, right. and people don't know it's an option. And you know, monogamy has become the norm, and anything becoming the norm in regards to love is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. Mm, especially if it keeps people in the dark or in the closet right. where they can't be who they you know, really are. People should, dis- should display their love and and they should express their love in okay. any way that they feel is right. I agree. Let's go back to the... Uh, as long as they're respectful to everyone involved. I want to tie this back into Mark's original topic, which was people getting married, and specifically how young people aren't as likely to be married now as maybe in the past By decades. the age of 25. Uh, right. And so, Lauren, does this apply in the polyamory world? You don't seem attracted to the idea of marriage, but... Oh, that's not necessarily true. Okay. How would it look for you? How would a marriage change your current relationships or I um would you marry multiple people in the same marriage? How I does that work? could maybe see myself getting married someday. Mm-hmm. Um this changes on a daily basis. But today I feel like I could potentially <laughs> see myself getting married someday. Um and um but I could never see myself not being polyamorous. Sure, but uh, so, how would it, how would it and, work together? But I don't see polygamy, so that's off the table because that just sounds like a whole mess that I don't want to deal with every day of my life. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people approach marriage as a contract, to sort of getting through life. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you you match up with somebody who's a good match for you, and uh, you know maybe they take care of the gardening and you take care of the finances or something like that. Yeah, I guess. But you asked what it would be like, what it would look like. Right. Well, you said you don't want to do polyamorous and married. You said you don't want to do polygamy, which is marrying multiple people, right? Right. So, how would it look for being polyamorous and married? So, I would be married, but we would. We would both, or I mean, if he doesn't want to see anyone else, then that's fine. He can be monogamous Mm -hmm. as long as he respects that I'm polyamorous and I can still see my other partner. So it doesn't sound like it's going to work very well. Able, no, it it sounds like it's going to work badly. But the ideal situation is we were both polyamorous. We still saw other people. We still loved other people and Mm -hmm. spent time with them. But in that situation, yes, there would be a primary. If he called me, I mean, especially if there are kids. If he called me, that would be a priority of course he would know you know i'm out on a date i'm spending time with my other partner you know only call me if it's important and so if he called me i would drop everything that i was doing and pick up the phone to make sure everything's okay with the kids okay with him yada yada etc and you know i try to be that way with all my partners already you know they know when i'm going out they know um what i'm doing and who i'm with and what hours I'm going to be with them. And I say, you know, if you really need me, feel free to shoot me a text or give me a phone call. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes they'll call me and they'll have these stressful situations and I will drop what I'm doing and go spend time with them and help them deal with their situation. And, of course, I'll make it up to the other person, of course. Hmm. But I try to be there for the people that I'm with. It sounds like for, I'm sure some people are listening to this thinking, this sounds like a lot of work. It sounds like it a is, lot of juggling. And that's what I'm saying is that it's, but then again, so is monogamy. Mm. So monogamy is hard. Polyamory is hard, but they that's have different, different hardships different struggles. to it. So think about this. You're monogamous. You feel guilty anytime you have feelings for someone else. Yeah. That's frustrating. Or you can't go and be with that yeah, person. Yeah, you can't. And, um, but that's the choice you make. And you also, I mean, you you can't, um, you have to, it, it, the communication lines aren't as open in that because if you feel, if you feel something for someone else, you have you can't to really drop, share that. you can't share it because it hurts the other person because they feel betrayed. Um, 
And, and that's two, a shame because it should. Or at the very least, they annoyed. Shouldn't. They shouldn't, shouldn't. It shouldn't hurt that other person. No. But that's, of course, usually why you're in a monogamous no. monogamous relationship. Because that person thinks that, they'll be hurt by and it. And I, I find a lot of frustration with being monogamous because I constantly have to ask my partner, are you happy? Are you, do mm. you want to be in this relationship? And, and I never have to ask that in a polyamorous relationship because they're seeing other people. They're choosing to spend that time with me. Every time they see me, they choose to spend that time with me. So I never have to wonder if they're happy. You can share your thoughts. Your experiences are also welcome. Have you been in polyamorous relationships? Did it work out for you? How's monogamy working out for you? Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. <laughs> or maybe you uh, don't have any relationships whatsoever. You go How does the this affect ascetic, the family? The ascetic route or whatever. 855 or 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Talk Live. The idea that politicians are leaders. Check your premises on that one. Cutting proof. Really? <laughs> Would you really follow Barack Obama or George Bush? Would you really follow their every command? Would you follow their suggestions? Do you believe that politicians are somehow more knowledgeable than you are? That politicians are of a special group of people? They're a special little critter that uh, for some reason is uh, more enlightened or educated? Constantly you can hear talking heads refer to the authorities or our leaders in Washington, and it's just, it's just patently absurd. I mean, these people are failures at life. That's why they became politicians. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so many of them are attorneys. Uh, <laughs> the good attorneys make, make a money. whole bunch of money and retire with yachts. Uh, the, the unsuccessful ones go into politics. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time, call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. 
What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial in to our toll-free number at 855-450-FREE. Join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. You can join Lauren on her website. Is it LaurenRumpler.com? No, 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 that's just my music. Okay. Yeah. Not yet. We're, yeah, we're not going to go there. Okay. Objectivistgirl.com? Okay. We're not then? ready for that. Um, What's the best way to, for people to... That was a to, hint, by the way, yeah. everybody. You're getting a little sneak here but yeah no we're not going to announce that just yet okay not so till december i can't promote any website for you tonight then? uh you can objectivistgirl.com okay. objectivist girl on facebook Perfect. objectivist girl without the i on youtube objectivist girl live on the voluntary virtues there's network there's two eyes in objectivist girl yeah the uh, objectivist girl G-R-L. G-R-L. Yeah. Girl. Girl. And Objectivist Girl Live on the Involuntary Virtues Network. And of course, my favorite, True Objective, which is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No, you can it's find not, that. not because that competes with Free Talk Live. You won't find that anywhere. On Monday. Okay. Uh, so Google Hangouts. <laughs> 855 450 free. Uh, so let's go, Mark, into this. Yeah, you can go get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. And there, when you go there and sign up for the subscription, you get delicious, shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica bean coffee. Mm. The, the free pound you get is, uh, they, they have a couple of choices, but after that, there's lots of different uh, different options you can choose from. You can change your order monthly. You can change the amount you want to get or um you can change how often you get it. You can be polyamorous with coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. Oh, baby. And <laughs> it, um, I, I got to wrap this stuff back in, you know. And <laughs> we have teamed up with Kiva.org uh, so that every for every 10 people that sign up with us at coffee.freetalklive.com, we're able to offer another micro loan to another person around the world to give them a hand up out of poverty, to give them what it is that they need to make their life better. They know you don't. Um, that's why I love coffee.freetalklive.com. So make sure that you get all of your polyamorous boyfriend and girlfriends to sign up so you can get 10 of them. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Uh, Lauren, you had something else to talk about tonight. And I, I don't know if you have it in front of you, but the I ballot do. measures. You had some exciting oh ballot God. measures, stuff that people yeah. will have the opportunity to vote on coming up in November, right? I think so. So it says, already bored of the endless, exhaustive, never-ending analysis of which party will control the Senate after the midterms. Maybe it's because you realize it's probably not going to change anything substantial about how Congress or the president behaves anyway. What site is this? I like this it already. This is Reason. Okay. Of okay. course you like it. It's yeah. awesome. Um, perhaps take a gander at some of the ballot initiatives instead. They can be troubling creatures, ballot initiatives, being easily orchestrated and manipulated by special interests to pass laws yep. that benefit themselves while claiming they're in the public interest. Take California, where a ballot initiative related to rate changes for health insurance on the note. November ballot is sponsored by a group with a state paid contract to intervene in rate cases. But hmm. ballot initiatives are also a chance for voters to bypass politicians that are so beholden to other special interests, they're not really serving the public anymore, if they ever really were. That's true. They are a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, um, what ballot measures are is, is sort of a fast track for legislation. And legislation is good or bad, yep. depending on what it Most is. Most of them seem to be bad, though. I mean, honestly, if you look at at least where we come from in Florida, if you looked at the ballot measures in Florida, almost all of them were bad, bad news. So every now and then you get a good one, but I don't think the trade off is worth in it. In Florida, I think it had to be, it was 66% or 70% or something like that to pass it because it was a constitutional really? amendment. Oh, that's right. Mm. But they almost always got 70%. They they often did. Yeah. People are like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. I'd <laughs> love to have a bullet train. Idea. Have you seen my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> the bullet train one is a, the classic example, though, right? Because in Florida, before right before we uh, left for New Hampshire, they uh, the year, like a couple years before that, they passed this ballot initiative. I think that was a 2006. Amending the Constitution to uh, to allow no. for... Sorry. No, it was earlier than that. It yeah, was repealed I, I, by definitely then. Definitely. 2001. I think they repealed it in 2006. Yeah, so they passed this ballot initiative to bring on this 
light rail or some crazy speed train between Tampa and Orlando. Yeah, the supersonic choo-choo was going to go for between Tampa, Orlando, and Miami. And the price tag that was put on it was like, you know, a certain amount, but it ended up being ten billion dollars or something ridiculous like this. And then they they haven't even some laid of, the first piece of track. Right. They, they, all they've done is like drawn pictures and eat donuts. They, <laughs> they formed some kind Wait, of task the force. Police? <laughs> no, they, there's, <laughs> there's just other bureaucrats. Oh, they all love donuts. Oh my goodness! Everybody loves donuts. Yeah. Donuts are delicious. I so, wish I had more donuts. So, donuts. Uh, well, we need a donut sponsor or something. We do. Mark. We need a donut sponsor. So, sponsor. So they put this thing on the ballot, and of course, everyone in Florida just goes ahead and votes for it. Say, oh yeah, it's a great idea. Bullet train. Check. Because nobody reads. And what well, no, They you know, they read a bullet train. Okay, great. Um, and so then later, <laughs> can't just read they, the title. They decided that they uh, the, the, the government bureaucrats who were looking at this started throwing out some numbers about what this was going to cost and how ridiculous it would be. And you know, bureaucracy does what it does. It's slow. It's inefficient. It's expensive. Unlike the bullet train, which is super fast. <laughs> so it never happened. The bullet train never I'm came sure about. It didn't. And the reason why is because some other group put a repeal the bullet train on the ballot. And so then the voters voted again, and they've uh, almost all of them voted for repealing the bullet train. So it was almost like, at least in Florida, it really maybe they're not reading it, Lauren. Maybe they're just voting for everything that's on the ballot. Plus, they can't see the word "not." Right, or I don't, don't know. I mean, it's, some of these things can be very complicated when you read through these. And we should measures. capitalize any nots or don'ts. They also, um, there was on the same ballot, it was uh, like this, how much space a pig can have in the state of Florida. Wow. So they uh, increased the, sp- or, you know, made a minimum for the amount of space that a pig could be raised in or something like that. And it's not, mm. look, I, I care deeply about how much space pigs get. I've got pigs and I, every year I'm expanding my pasture. The first year they had more pasture space than, than you know, nor- pigs normally have. And now they're. They're like 10 times that space. Hmm. That might be an exaggeration. You can pass anything if you just name it correctly. But Look at the Patriot Act. Yep. All they did was drive the pig production out of the state. I mean, oh, mm. well, we can't grow pigs here in Florida as cheaply, so grow we'll grow them elsewhere. <laughs> That's <laughs> almost what they're pigs. doing, though, if you think about it. I mean, it, it they just is. hold them in a cage and they get fat. Yeah, let's not go there. That's really yeah, it's depressing. Pretty, it's pretty awful. Um, ooh, okay. Hey, let's go to the so, phones. We've got, we got Nathan oh, on the line. Do. We can get to more, more ballot measures in a moment, but Nathan is with us in Texas via Skype. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Nathan in Texas going once. Nathan in Texas going twice. Well, we'll try him later on. See if he He's probably put himself on mute. That ha- happens almost all the time when somebody... Or sometimes it's my sound card, so it might be me. I'll, we'll figure it out. So go on with more ballot measures. So your state legislator too afraid of law enforcement unions or of losing their donations to scale back the drug war? Fine. Put the matter up for a vote. Now, whether the voters should be able to bypass politicians on any matter they choose, well, that's a completely different fight. There are hundreds of ballot initiatives on the state, country, and municipal level. Oh, sorry, county. Sorry, on the state, county, and municipal level that will go before any... Uh, before voters in November. Reason can't possibly outline all of them, but we can draw attention to many of interests yeah. to libertarians or independent voters. Here are some notable voters. Here are some notable voters are considering guns. Washington has two completely competing ballot initiatives on gun background checks. Initiative this is five. Washington State, I assume. Um. Says Washington usually. That's what it means. Okay. <laughs> uh, has two competing ballot initiatives on gun background checks. Initiative 594 would require background checks for every gun purchase in the state, though it exempts unique guns and transfers between family members. According to some analysis of the text, it goes so far as to make it illegal to even temporarily physically give a gun to someone else is else except Ugh. in cases where a person is in immediate danger or when hunting or in shooting ranges. Sounds terrible. On the other side, Initiative 591 would forbid Washington from confiscating firearms without due process or from implementing background checks unless there's a uniform national standard. Need- what if they both pass? Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, needless to say, both of these laws can't coexist. Early October polls have background checks passing handedly, though support for both initiatives seems to have Stand dropped. by. We'll come back with more on Free Talk Live. 
Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right, for every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. the number 70. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Hi, folks. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You take control and bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please get interactive there. And if you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then go to become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. Look, it makes a big difference for us when you do this. And it only takes you a moment. You can sign up with any major credit card through PayPal or use Visa or MasterCard right there on our website. You get perks like access to the Amp Only Call-In Lines, the Amp Only Podcast, 
Amp Only Forum, the Amp Only Facebook group. Lots of cool perks. And the five bucks a month is invested into the show. It's not going to pay us. It's going to get Free Talk Live on more radio stations all around the country. Bring Free Talk Live to more internet connections around the world. And also bring Free Talk Live to places that don't have internet via satellite uh, delivery. So there are different ways to get Free Talk Live into people's ears, but they all cost money. So send us five bucks a month and we can spread the ideas of freedom uh, pretty effectively for that five bucks. Go to amp.freetalklive.com to get those perks too. That's amp. Dot freetalklive.com. And now that I am not facing an immediate uh, prison cell, uh, I will be able to focus once Keenvention wraps up, or maybe to coincide with Keenvention, focus on doing some uh, fundraising for more satellite channels around the world, which is something that I've been wanting to do, but uh, it's going to require one of those kickstarter Indiegogo campaign things, and there's some prep that you have to do in advance to really make one of those things happen not that I really know anything about it because I've never done one before, but there's other people who have, so I'm trying to learn stuff about that. But we are going to work on that, too. So to expand our satellite footprint, you can help us, though, as well by being an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com as we go to your phone calls and thoughts. Maybe Lauren will give us some more of these ballot initiatives here in a moment. We're going to try Nathan again. It was my sound card that went bad in the last segment. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Thanks. How, how's everyone doing? Good. Go ahead. Well, uh, I'm glad that you've uh, got out of the court case, um, but no, I do have a book selected for you just uh, in case for the next time. So. Oh, thanks for that. I appreciate that. Well, I, have, I still have a year-long jail sentence hanging over my head for two years, so if they decide they want to arrest me for some other misdemeanor, uh, they can certainly motion to impose that suspended jail sentence. I suspect that, that more, most of your career in New Hampshire will include a suspended jail sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, man. Okay. So um, I find the, the idea of polyamory interesting and um, something that I don't know if you hear this a lot, Lauren, but um, there's a famous quote by Ayn Rand where she says that love is not this weird, irrational thing. Like, you know, a lot of people think that love is, oh, it's this mystical thing. But mm-hmm. um, Rand famously held a different view that it's an expression of our highest values. And yes. It seems to me that you can only have one set of highest values, like sort of like you can only have one maximal element of a collection. You can only have a highest peak on the mountain. Uh, so it seems like that would imply that you can only love fully love one person. Well, so, then Ayn Rand um, I'm would curious, have failed. What do you think about that? <laughs> then Ayn Rand would have failed in her own <laughs> philosophy I, I since she was uh, technically polyamorous. Um, so it's interesting. She seems real cold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't get me started on that. Um, but um, the thing is, is that. Um, Yes, you have a hierarchy of values. So there is something at the top of your list, but that doesn't make it your only value. And so um, you and you can find multiple people that fulfill those values. So say I value objectivism at the top. And so I find multiple objectivists who I have connections with on different hierarchies like travel and, um, you know, other and in intellectual pursuits. Um, and we have many things in common and they're also objectivists. If travel is the, the second on my list and so is intellectual pursuits, but objectivism is the highest. And I find two men, one, both of them are objectivists. One of them likes to travel and the other is highly intellectual. Should I have to choose between, you know, my second and third value or should I not be able to pursue both? Well, uh, in Atlas Shrugged, Dagny Taggart actually uh, had a string of multiple, uh, what do you call it, serial monogamy? Serial monogamy. Because uh, she was, yes. I'm sorry? Yes, serial monogamy, right. you are correct. Right, so uh, I guess it just, it seemed like uh, like her values were the same and she was just trying to find a person who better fit those values. So like, in your example, you would pick the one person, like hypothetically, you pick the one person who had the higher correspondence. Yes, and I would argue that though she was only engaged with one man at a time, she still loved those other men. And for her to feel confined in expressing that love is sad for her. I mean, the ultimate value in objectivist ethics is to 
work towards happiness. And if your happiness can be achieved through multiple relationships, which I find is easier to achieve, um, because you're not going to find somebody that fits all of the criteria that you want in a partner. Um, and I don't No, They're always going to have ups and downs. Right. And I don't personally, uh, I can't enjoy the idea of settling for just one person that fulfills a number of values, but not all of them. Instead, I can have two relationships that are equally important that fulfill different values. I think it makes sense. Nathan, thanks for your call tonight. Let's continue here. You can bring up absolutely Yeah, I feel bad for anything. Dagny. I feel, Never read it. I, I feel bad for her. I mean, she Take gave up this wonderful relationship with Hank Reardon. Um, who she absolutely loved and adored because she met John Galt. Now, if she hadn't done this, she could have had an amazing relationship with both. Let's go to uh, Uber slash Lyft. George, you're on Free Talk Live calling from Virginia. Where are you at tonight? Um, D.C. area, Virginia. Welcome, yep. sir. What's on your mind? Well, basically, I'd like to give the Satan Award for Supreme Effery to Alamo Runacar here. For what happened last month, I got into a car accident where someone <gasps> rear-ended me. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah and um, get this. At the, at the time, when I brought the car back to Alamo, I showed them a copy of the you know the ticket to, that the other driver got, you know, it was all, and the people there all knew it wasn't my phone. They were like, well... Uh, what we gotta charge you the, the the deductible amount on your insurance, but we're gonna go, but you'll get that back once the other guy's insurance pays it off. Mm -hmm. Well, today in the mail, I get something that I get a letter from Alamo saying that I owe them six hundred and fifty one dollars and sixty seven cents for an accident that's not even my fault. What? Oh my god. Yeah. yeah so. What do you do about that? Do you take them to court? How do you deal with that? Oh, I'm gonna um first um I'm gonna go what's ask them what's what and then take it up with my insurance company here so they're gonna have to come out of my insurance because i ain't got that kind of loot on me at the moment man but yeah it's like first they say oh we, that yeah we clearly understand it's not your fault we can tell here it's all proven that it was not your fault but but now like i said a month later here i i get this letter saying that our would, review indicates you are responsible for the damage to our vehicle. Oh man! Now, would uh, I'll, I'll now you're a driver for Uber and Lyft, and yeah. does that affect your ability to rent a car? I mean, can you rent a car and still use it for business purposes legally? Uh, no, not although um, maybe Lyft might be looking into that right there. You know, in case you know if your car breaks down or something like that. But in this case, I was in Florida. I was in Tampa, ah. Indian Rock. In, in Tampa area, visiting family. So you weren't and, on the job then? No. At that time? I did. I was just Damn. on vacation. Yeah. Man, I that's a bummer because, you know, normally when you go into those car rental places, they're like, you want our insurance policy? And then they, uh, you know. They, yeah, $25 you, a day. So you were paying for their insurance coverage and then they still well, screwed you? Oh, well, no, no, no. I did not get you the weren't. last damage. No. Uh, I did. I wonder if that I wonder if that would have changed things. If if you had bought their insurance coverage, I wonder if you would yeah, have. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it would have changed it right there. But at the same yeah. time, it's like look, uh, th that's supposed to cover if it's your fault, you know, or you hit something, you know, and, you know, your car gets scratched, whatever, or where there there's no one else to go after, you know. Damn. I figured. Right there. In this case, they got the other guy's insurance thing. They got a copy of the ticket that the other guy received for not paying attention because the dude was on a cell phone or something like that and just, you know, slammed right into the back of me. And Sorry so to hear like, about that, George, man. I'm glad. You, are you okay, though, physically? Oh, yeah. I just right. got, like, a, you know, some spring muscles. Could have like been the, worse. Some muscle relaxers well, and stuff like that. But at least you're not like, in a hospital with broken bones. In that case, $600 seems like a small price to pay. I thank you for the call tonight, man. I'm glad to know you're all right. Alamo. There you go. <laughs> uh, so there's the story. I'm sorry to hear about that. That's terrible. That sucks. So, Lauren, give me uh, any other uh, quick highlights from the uh, Reason yeah. story. Other ballot initiatives of interest coming up. So Chicago is also also has an advisory vote planned on whether to require background checks for gun sales and to ban the sale of assault weapons, oh despite the city's reputation of having the toughest gun control laws in the country. Well, there's always there's always a need for more. Once they start controlling yeah. one thing, then it's just control and more and more. Also, coincidentally, a reputation for people shooting each other. Shocking. <laughs> And Shocking. on the flip side, Alabama voters will consider enshrining a state constitutional amendment protecting the right to bear arms and prohibit any international treaties from interfering with this right. That's not too shabby. No. We're out of time for tonight. 
But we'll be back tomorrow. You can join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Talk on Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more. 